it's official. We have been invaded by Canada. We have a Canadian co-host. What's up, Kevin? How are you? Hey, what's up? Let's go out. Let's go out. Let's go find some curs and some burrs and uh, maple syrup. All about. We got a Canadian on the podcast. We got a Canadian co-host. Um, you know what? I'm gonna introduce you a bit more after you know we always gotta drop an intro. So big time. <sighs> we gotta drop an intro, dude. Nitro is the glory. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast with your host tonight, Keenan White, aka Lefty the Great. And if you are unlucky, the Finnish village idiot, JQ. This is the RC Podcast with no name, but plenty of content. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some serious bench racing. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number one twenty-seven of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Keenan White, aka Left of the Great, and over to my left. No, I messed up. Over to my right, left. Over to my left, but on my right right now is my Canadian co-host, RC Kevin. What's up, Kevin? How are you? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, man. That intro is big time. You. uh you do things well now. You know, uh, I'm trying to get Jacob Peterson. He he did that for me, and he won't answer my he won't answer my PMs. So if you know Jacob Peterson, I think he's just super busy. He barely answered him, and he was working for me. So well, not work, but doing that for me. So I hope he I, I he's supposed to do my hotline ones, and I want to get him to do a few ones. And my buddy Danny Paz is also helping me out. So good stuff. You know what? Uh, we're gonna talk. I'm going to properly introduce you today, Kevin, in a minute, because you've now this is like your fourth time on the podcast, uh, first time on the recorded podcast, but um, no, we spoke about uh, the Quebec classic uh, once or twice. Okay, right, right. But now as a co host, as a proper co host, yes, I consider you a co host now and one of the rotating co hosts. But uh, before I go on any further, I want to shout out and say thank you to the NNRC squad, all of you guys around the world. Um, we can't do this without your support. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for downloading, listening to us ramble on. I mean, we've we've got five hour podcasts, so <laughs> they might take a week to get through. So thank you for that. Thank you to the patrons of the NNRC. You guys help keep the bills paid around here. Uh, I greatly appreciate your support. Uh, you guys get early release. You got the early release of the Aiden Horn podcast this week. Uh, which i thoroughly enjoyed it was a surprise uh he was he was very i enjoyed it you fool uh he he was funny it was just like he got comfortable and he was talking and i think he enjoyed it too and uh so thank you to him and of course you know thank you to all of the awesome companies that support us and decide to advertise with us they are mayako we're still waiting for those pictures we want to see them uh jq talks about that in this week's podcast beach rc of course tnr fuels high tech rc techno rc lugs rc racing tires manscape.com sun city rc raceway papa willie's traction tonic racecraft usa house of rc congratulations to them uh, uh, collaborating with uh efra rcgp and uh, i did say racecraft wiley builds and uh jq threads sorry and jq racing as well sorry i forgot about jq racing how could i forget uh Thank you for those companies. Remember, everybody, showing the sponsors some love, shows the podcast some love. We have coupon codes. We have affiliate links. You can use them. You can save some money uh, or just use the affiliate link. It helps us. So thank you uh, for the, to them, and thank you guys. Please show them some love. All right, Kevin. So welcome at, to, like, being on the intro and all that stuff of the No Name RC podcast. Uh, you have been a long time supporter. We've become really good friends over the last couple years. I want to say, um, I met you uh, actually via, was it that you, I met you through the podcast and that's how we got cool. Or was it that you was going to drive JQ and that we got cool. Cause you did JQ for a while. It's funny because I got a, a hold of you 
uh, and I started listening to the podcast when I drove to uh, the Quebec Indoor Nats in 2017. 2018 2018 yeah. so it was your fourth or fifth podcast so i listened to it on the six hour car ride and i started to get uh, to to know uh, what you did i met with uh, jq racing uh, team driver matt dixon there i uh, tried his car it was a really cool dude and uh, then uh, on the way back i listened to the other podcast so 10 hour ride was a, a good a good portion of your uh, library and uh, that's how we started talking, started uh, driving JQ. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I think I was uh, in the first uh, couple of Patreons that you have uh, yeah, yeah, when you, you started. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we've been texting almost every day uh, since. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, what, I, wh- what I always tell people is on any given day, I can be talking to anybody in the world. I, I might have five conversations going on at a time sometimes. It's kind of calmed down a bit. Um, but... RC is awesome. I get to meet people and and learn different cultures and learn about people. And uh, yeah, I consider you a friend and we watch, we talk about RC a lot. I think your insight into RC is very good. I mean, you haven't been doing this for a long time, but you're really into it. Um, and you have a, a good eye for things and you bring up things to me and we, you know, we end up watching races together and it's, it's cool, man. I'm glad to have you on. And I just want to having get, me. Yeah. I just wanted people to have a little, know a little bit about you because you, you do do RC. I know you come from a sports background as well, and you work in the sports industry. And you're you're really in tune with what's going on in the world. So, like social media and all that type of stuff, I would say. So, just let people know who you are, like, because I I'm sure they're like, who's this guy that's just her, her own. I know your French followers know you because you do a lot of lives in Fran- French and all that stuff. But um, yeah, tell us who are you. Well, I'll try and uh, tell you everything in a nutshell. Um, basically, I played the decent level hockey and uh, pro uh, level lacrosse um, until 2012. A couple of uh, injuries and uh, concussions got me uh, stopped. Um, got into mountain biking, got into cycling, started to work in the sports industry as a rep and a distribution, distribution uh, uh, network and all that stuff. And then I fell into the rabbit hole that's called the RC racing. Mm-hmm. Um, fell in love uh, right away, trying to gain speed and stuff like that. I, the competition and everything is uh, something I I thoroughly uh, enjoyed and clicked right away. Um, and uh, so it's funny because we talk about when you, you were doing JQ, how to sell to different dealers and distribution and stuff like that. We, we talked about the business and we connected on a a different level that's something i also take care of uh pro athletes in the in cycling so the 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 rebates the discount the mm-hmm. drama is very very similar but different at the same time so uh yeah uh, we connected on that i'm not only a, a guy with a weird uh, french accent um i'm also going to do a bit more content in, in english uh Good. hopefully i can uh, start growing my youtube channel um I started to understand and uh, and see all the um, the different cameras and the equipment and stuff like that. So I'm probably not going to be at the level of uh, Ryan Harris, but uh, hopefully I do something uh, decent. I'm a huge social media geek also, so mm-hmm. I look at different uh, aspects. Uh, some of the sponsors that you have right now, Manscaped, I, I listen to them uh, on of course. the Hockey you Podcast. Too. Yes, I do. I'm a... I need a 4.0, so I know. hook a brother yeah. up. Hook a brother up. Um, so yeah, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch, a, I consume a lot of YouTube, um, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoy the social media aspect of it. So mm-hmm. I was able to to put my RC passion, uh, the social media stuff, and put it all together and uh, started my channel uh, around last March, if I'm not mistaken. So March 2020, uh, and then it grew from a couple of lives here and there couple were pretty brutal um now they're getting a bit better um trying to put uh different uh either sponsors or companies or rc news in, in quebec and canada uh, to the light uh, there's not a lot of french content so i'm trying to do french and it, it, it grew a bit uh, bigger than i expected and i'm enjoying it so hopefully doing some english content is gonna mm-hmm. also uh have another following so i'll be able to keep my english stuff on youtube and keep my french stuff on uh, facebook we'll see how that grows but uh, i uh, thoroughly enjoy it 
Awesome, man. Yeah, your lives are definitely growing. Um, I honestly, I can't tune. I may watch like a few, a minute. I can't, I don't understand it, so I don't tune in. Uh, but I see what you're doing. You're coordinating with other French guys. You're doing unboxing. You're doing uh, virtual unboxing with other people. Yeah. Uh, do you get much uh, crossover from actual people in France or as well to your channel? Not much. Uh, okay. I did uh, start to talk uh, with a couple of people there, like RC Mumus or something like that. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. Circus from Circus R RC News. Um, we are supposed to at some point start working together and maybe uh, collab on a video or two. Um, obviously, the time difference is a bit complicated, and uh, I do have a day job, so mm -hmm. it, it's hard to coordinate everything. Um, but I know that uh, when I did uh, JQ, you wanted me to do my lives and share it in France and stuff like that. Yep. It's funny, but we don't speak the same language. Mm -hmm. Um, the cars are completely different. I, I do watch a lot of the content that uh, our RC, uh, Circus RC does, but when he has like true French drivers, it's hard to follow because like the hubs, they don't call it the same way. Suspension mm -hmm. is not exactly the same. There's a lot of uh, different uh, variation in languages, which okay. I don't, uh, I don't always pick up. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like that in Spanish too. Uh, you know, like proper Castellanians or whatever, Spain, Spanish versus my chop Dominican ghetto Spanish. It's, it's really a, a big, a big difference. Um, and Mexico is completely different too. Yeah, but Mexican Spanish is a lot more clearer, actually. Um, Dominicans really speak bad. Dominicans speak Spanish like Jamaicans speak English. Like it's so, it's very chopped, very fast, patois, cut short, um, lots of slang. So, I mean, it's a big difference. So I, I would imagine for France, it's different too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, um, and you're also really big into, just, just so we wrap it up, so your RC work, uh, you work a lot with Bego Racing, yeah. as well uh we did something together with him well we did something together when we did the uh lollipop challenge for yannick you and albego did a video uh, and now you have your own, also your own not own but you're managing an indoor track uh i know it's been a struggle to get it open COVID, different we're dirt. reopening monday okay and this is a all-purpose facility like the people are really into dirt oval and and now they've built a 10 scale track this is a multi-million dollar facility we're talking about yeah that, that's a, one of the other reasons why i want to do a bit of uh, english content is uh they opened up a five dollar um, five million dollar complex north of montreal about half an hour north uh mm -hmm. there's uh three and a half tracks if we can uh, say it like that so there's a pretty big hobby shop that's super stock with oval on road basher um off-road stuff uh, there's two tracks at the first level. So there's a dirt oval and a dirt off-road. Mm -hmm. And you can either take the stairs or the elevator to go to the second uh, level. And you're going to have um, a big carpet track that they switch between um, on-road, on carpet, and mm -hmm. uh, oval on uh, on carpet too. Okay. Um, they're opening... There's a small slot car track that's going to open up too, and outside they're j they just announced uh, yesterday or the day before um, Basher area for fifth mm -hmm. scale and eighth scale uh, Bashers outdoors outdoors. Okay. So they'll be able to run their cars under the lights, everything free of charge. So that's pretty amazing, and they're going to do a rock crawling area outside also. So awesome. it's really going to be all the multifaceted uh, areas of RC. So that's amazing. Yeah, you are just full into RC. Like you're in your own RC world. You're making a, a you know name for yourself, and that's good to see. Um, and you get to do it too, so that's great as well. Yeah. But thank you for thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Um, and definitely you you bringing a lot of value here, just like Zach does, Max does. I'm hoping one day we can probably all get together. I, that would be really hard to do. If Zach yeah, but that, that'd be awesome though. Yes. You could meet a U.S. race and uh, something like that. Or, there's a special there's a special breed of people that once you take care of a track, you see another side of RSC that mm -hmm. you cannot comprehend usually. So there's a couple of things that you link up to people. So what, when Zach talks about his track, mm -hmm. I know he's uh, he's working really hard on it yeah i oh man i had to prep a track twice it was it's a lot of work it's like having another yeah. family like another woman like a whole another family it really is it's uh, all right crazy. man cool um i think that's enough about you no offense uh we that's introduced okay. you 
<laughs> but you no, seriously, man, you really you're a good friend of mine. I consider you a good friend. Thank you for your time. I I really appreciate your your input and I look forward to um to like working with you. Like that's what we're doing. We're working together somewhat somehow. Yeah, for sure. I think we're we're gonna be able to to work together on talk uh talk about the RC news, uh different mm -hmm. stuff. Am I gonna be the setup guy? No probably not. I'm gonna be the the let's make you laugh type of guy. Yeah, and yeah, and I'm, we're going to be probably working together here at the Nationals virtually uh, yep. coming up. So that's good, 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 good. Um, speaking of RC news, do we do we want to do? Do we you know? Do we want to talk about this new lawnmower four point or are we just going to go straight into the news right here? What do you think we should do? I think we should pay some bills, Kevin. No, no, nope, you know what? Let's just do the high tech RC uh, news because the news this week is brought to you by high tech RCD. They are a leader in RC systems delivering the highest performance and reliability supported by dedicated customer service personnel. You can try out the HSB 9381 TH servo. They have efficient brushless motors, titanium gears, low consumption, constant output and a metal case. They also have the RDX two pro charger that can charge up to four two four cell packs in just 45 minutes provide power for the engine heating and tire warming they also have a bluetooth dongle that i believe you can connect to your phone and that makes it really cool so you can check live like live data on your actual batteries so trust in high tech your servo and charger headquarters visit hightechrcd.com where to buy for your nearest retailer thank you high tech rcd they are a very old company they want to get back into racing i'm super excited to have them on board i used to run their servers exclusively back in the day because that's all that like honestly you ran high tech servers because they worked uh and they bring you the rc news this week all right kev um we have let's go some... over uh, over the pond in uh, europe yes let's start with our, our buddies in uh, italy i think yes um so we had some racing at the ospi team track in italy beautiful facility and they are they had a warm-up this weekend too a nationals italian nationals warm-up but it got the big big guns out we and... didn't we didn't see much uh euro uh euro races i think they're slowly uh going back out there they're similar to what we've been having for restrictions here in uh, Canada. So people have been uh, practicing here and there, but uh, starting to see uh, bigger races is uh, amazing now. Yes, and we had, what's good about this, we have Ongaro rocking the bangs. His, you know, his hair is almost over his eyes. Now he needs to put the hat back on or something, man. His hair might be getting his way. He's like a boy band character. He does, he does. He's getting, he's he's grown into a young man now. He's t he's tall, I mean, well, obviously on that. But uh, we have Madman Marco. Hey, I think that this dude is probably one of the most underrated racers in RC. Marco Barufalo, he wins e-buggy. And, and Nitro Buggy, actually. And, um, oh, let's go over the Nitro Buggy results. Uh, they, I'm reading off Circus RC. Uh, they said that Ricardo Berton of Infinity actually took the TQ. But uh, Marco Barufalo apparently, like, just drove away with this in a Nitro. He, it says, on, on, out on top in a 30-minute Nitro final with a lot margin over Davide Angaro. It, that is just doesn't even sound right, like, in the same sentence but barufalo is good and people underrate him a lot i do i do i also believe that uh a lot of guys are going to be rusty I'm not trying mm -hmm. to find excuses for for people uh Ongaro got uh, separated uh and uh, see the air quotes for you guys listening on the podcast um so he, he separated for for from his mechanic mm -hmm. uh he transferred to boots which uh, ended up uh, right a step behind on the podium um yep. so looking forward to see the guys uh, running a bit more and uh, maybe we'll see the order reshuffle a bit more so uh curious to see how that's gonna go i forgot i just saw that that they announced uh this was the first race that i think very and boots worked together so must it have must been have been weird in the pits Oh yeah, it must have been so bittersweet for Angaro to be looking over there, very and that because Vary is a big boy like me, so they got a big, big red, all red one, and you know that guy was part of your 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 team for so long and part of your success, and now he's over there with one of your competitors, and you're just like, wow. Uh, but I, I think it's going to help uh, Elliot a lot. Uh, I think when he missed uh, when he he left uh, Kyosho and. Uh, 
didn't have a Mick uh, to support him, it's going to help him out a lot. Um, well, he he had he has mechanics at at S Works as well. Um, he had one at uh, Silver State when he won. But yes, you definitely need that. He's like well, Larry's working for Reds. He's not working for S Works. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to also be like, is it just motor work or is it also set up? It has to be. Has to be set up. Help. I, I don't cars think, too. I don't think. Um... Elliot is never going to move away from Reds, so that's probably the best way to bring. Him. That's probably the best way. Hey, by the way, congrats on them. Yes. Uh, they're uh, they're pregnant, so congrats to Elliot and uh, his family. Um, that's probably yeah. I didn't know her name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the best way to bring over a mechanic. Make sure he works full time for him. So even mm -hmm. if he changes uh, his chassis or whatever happens, I, we know that uh, being a Reds mechanic again, air quotes, um, is going to be uh, probably better for uh, for his longevity. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, Barufalo, man. Baruf, so we had a nitro buggy, we had Barufalo, Ongaro boots, and then an e-buggy, we had Barufalo again, Ongaro, and Zankatin. Yeah. And I thought Zankatin had retired, but he it's good to see him back. And um, this dude was good with TLR. So he's back to TLR. Let's see what he can do if he can make it go, and, and do some and do some that like do something because he's he's a good driver. He's definitely good. Yeah, there's so, not much presence uh, for TLR now that uh, not Renault uh, left. So yeah, hopefully they they get the ball rolling again because that's a big market for them. They I do agree. So Horizon does so well in uh, in America that uh, probably having a, a better foot in Europe. I think Renault did a really good job with that before. But now he moved uh, fully Kyosho. We'll see how that goes for them. Business yeah, wise. Uh, TLR was big. Uh, actually, Jerome Chambon was who, who really grew them over there in France. And they grew really big well, in Europe as well. Uh, but it's just, they're pretty non -ex I mean, they are back in France, but it's pretty non-existent, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but Zancatine's in Italy, so let's see what happens. So, um, all right. What else do we have going on? Oh, all right. None offered stuff right here, Kevin. Tebow is all set up with doop, a... doop, 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 doop. This program is interrupted by breaking news. We're supposed to cue the music, but that's probably not happening. Um, breaking news. This important PSA is brought to you by manscaped.com. So we'll hopefully we won't have uh, too much uh, wordplay, but uh, let's go. This is your pubic service announcement. Cue the wordplay. And uh, the news you, uh, you've been waiting for, the Manscaped engineering team has confirmed that they have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is now available for purchase in the US of A and in Canada. So Lefty, hook a brother up. Yes. Uh, the new trimmer was just uh, released a couple of uh, weeks ago, and uh, I know that uh, a couple of people got uh, their hands uh, on it uh, pretty quickly. You did. Don't want to see pictures. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so join uh, join over the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with their junk. Uh, and this uh, exclusive offer for you is twenty percent off with the no name promo in code. You'll be in all caps. You'll be able to save a uh, twenty percent off and get free worldwide shipping with the promo code at manscaped.com. For you Canadians, they ship to Canada free of charge um so yeah a couple of uh, new um new points yep. on uh, the 4.0 they have uh, nice. advanced their ceramic blade and skin safe uh, technology that is uh, so good that it almost seems as if manscape worked with elon musk engineers to ensure your testes are safe as possible so hopefully I didn't uh, screw up that ad read too much, and uh, we'll do another uh, bullet uh, point so they uh, optimize the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer to be waterproof so you can groom in the shower and not have to worry about making a mess on the bathroom floor. So guys, Manscaped, nothing yes. else to say. And it's wireless charging. And trust me, I used it a couple of weeks ago when I first got it and I tried to hurt myself and I did it. So you know what guys? That's pretty weird, but I, I know. Care. Cut through the jungle to find your manhood, www.manscaped.com, promo code, no name, all caps, Saves yourself 20%. The ad reads are hard, aren't they, Kevin? I know. It's it's oh, hard. Not too bad. 
not too bad at all. All right, uh, on to the next bit of news here. Tebow is going to a big uh, chip race. Uh, chip, they call it a chip race for no, no prep. I believe they pick chips out of a, a hat or something like that. But this is a big no prep race in Tulsa, in Oklahoma. I think this is even bigger than what was in Vegas. But I, I haven't really been paying attention. It. Yeah. Yeah. They're growing on it. I know that a lot of the Florida guys are going there. AJ Morasco has been working on his uh, stuff a lot, is going up. Um, I think it was McClan that uh, sauced the heck out of Tebow, announcing mm -hmm. him as the Reedy race winner and this and that. Um, that's a lot of pressure for a guy that never went into a straight I line know. for a six, six, 65 feet. So he's never done be, this. Yeah, it's I'm really looking it forward 100? to see. It's well, 132 feet, actually. It depends if it's eight uh, quarter of a mile or an eighth of a mile. So if it's it's quarter, if it's a quarter, it's so it's 132. Feet. 132, yeah. yeah. Well, like this will be a good. I know Mayfield's been doing this. I know Mayfield's lost. I mean, this does take some a lot of chassis tuning, but he'll have like Colin Branch there, uh, Tim Smith. Uh oh, on the well, Colin is the McClan um, team manager. Tim is obviously the, the drag, one of the guys who helped build this software and make this ESC because they have a specific. I think it's called the DKR or DRK, DRK. drag race. Yeah, yeah drag, drag race kings. And this this software and this ESC and, and stuff is really good, but it is a lot of pressure on Tebow and he. I, he but his car looks really badass though. Wow, it it looks so he good. Has he incorporated his color and some black on it. It looks amazing. Um, you guys can go on social media and find it. We should have um, had I'm, it up here. We were slacking, but that's all yeah, right. Yeah, come on, Rowan. No, we don't have Do him it. today. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, Rowan. He's, at, he's um, asleep. Yeah, for sure. I'm really wondering how how a pro off-road driver is going to see a difference. Does it even going to make a difference uh, if he's really fast on the dirt compared to... Um, to um, to like these guys that go in a straight line i don't think he's gonna win i think he's gonna i mean honestly these guys now they're because it's they know how to the do cars. this they it's know how to the do this yeah. right so they know how to set up their cars they know how to do it tebow is coming in with just the ability to be able to drive a any rc car i think you can drive any rc car well but you need a really good car to win this and you need to have some drag race knowledge. So it's going to be hard to race guys who have been doing this for a long time and have their cars really set up. I'm really hoping he does well, but chances are he's going to get beaten by a guy that has a $125 remote. <laughs> probably, probably. And, and it's, it's humbling for these guys too. I would say, yeah. even though they would say that, Oh, I've never done this before. You know, when you, these guys are super competitive. Yeah, so sure. maybe he might win a couple races too and be like, oh, all right, I'm getting into this. Maybe I could win. And then, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's so difficult that no, the no prep is it's fun, but it's only one pass and you, your day can be gone. Like you can literally go there and be done after your first race, but I, they might have some rules where you can buy back in or they have other races too. So I, I'll be watching this this weekend and congratulations. I think DE Racing is putting this on as one of the big sponsors I see. I'll be I'll be watching it for the from the corner of my eye too. Uh, chances are by this uh, by the time the podcast is out, I'll probably be uh, oval racing. Probably going to try this uh, over the weekend. Um, and uh, drag racing is picking up also at the at the this the ctsr complex uh, i'm mm. not don't know if i'm supposed to say it but they're gonna probably build a, a tree and they're gonna have a, a prep track uh in the back uh in the back of the parking lot so that's Makes probably sense. something i'm also gonna get uh, involved in um and did you see that uh traxxas came out with their uh drag racer like it's been waited for so many uh so mm -hmm. many weeks and they just came out and uh, it's funny because purist racers are looking at this and they're saying, oh, it's a piece of shit and this and that. What can you expect from expect from uh, Traxxas? They were going to come out with a good RTR and it's going to work well. And if you want to be to be race ready, you got to put some stuff in it. There's no race rig that you can buy off the shelf right now. So I haven't seen it, it though. I haven't seen good. the car. Yet. Yeah, Mark, Mark Center Maria did uh, a couple of vlogs on it. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks uh, pretty cool. I got to watch this channel. I, well, I mean, I got to go watch it. I just been kind of busy this last week too. All right. Non racing stuff. Well, this is racing, but 
a different form of racing that I see is growing. It's U4 racing. Uh, my buddy Sean Russin and Losi Motorsports have been really deep into this and the U4 if they're their laser not car which they released uh i think a couple of months ago but really popular and sean was telling me that this was possible but the goat cavalry went out there to hang out at laser town so laser town is actually a place for where they have king of the hammers and like u4 racing and this big event there so they're out there building rc tracks on the on the real tracks and so cav made the trip out there obviously he's a he drives for Losi. I mean, he might have packed up the family and went out there because it's like a family thing. I, I People like to go out in the desert a lot. I've learned that about my American friends. They really like the desert, especially out west there. I've just, I don't see the appeal of a desert, but I get it. Maybe sand dunes and stuff. Uh, but they went out there and my buddy was, he loves it. Like, um, this is like, All right. oh, 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 you're choking there. Uh, uh oh, no worries. Got a drink of water. So Sean, my buddy HRC Tyler, Beach RC Cup, mine's at home. Sean and Tyler have been going out to Lazerton a lot. They went out there. I mean, this isn't really big, but it's growing. And man, it looks like they had a blast. I was looking at some pictures from it and some video. Uh, and Cav seemed to have fun too, talking to Sean. And it's good. I mean, personally, do I think Cav should have been at the the the, the next race we're going to talk about, which is the warm ups? Yes, but. Um, Hey, you know, it's you have to go do some company stuff too, and I thought this was good for the U four guys. And I think a he's, break. I think he's taking care and he's taking advantage of the full horizon package. Mm -hmm. He was doing the same thing in Associated uh, a while back when he was able to race on road, race off road, uh, do everything that was possible. So he's doing the same thing. He he's putting uh, time in a category that is probably very lucrative for. Uh, for Losi right now mm -hmm. and i think it's just a good thing for uh for him and to have pro drivers show up at these races. are they going to do well or not i don't know but it's going to expose um off-road racing to you four guys like tebow he's going to expose mm -hmm. like he's going to be talking to to the guys and uh, buddy that has a slash or a dr10 that does no squat about off-road racing he's going to see live rc and matt olsen or whoever's going to do the coverage talking to Tebow and having like a, his entourage. So people are going to be asking who the hell is that guy? Mm -hmm. And they're going to start uh, looking into off-road and uh, see something else. So it could bring, uh, it, it could be a good thing to carry over <clears throat> people to off-road. Like it is a good thing to put pro racers into other events so they can uh, represent their uh, sponsors. Yeah. At Losi, the Losi Motorsports part of horizon is really pushing that that's brian nunez he was on this podcast a few episodes ago great chat with him yeah. audio wasn't great but um his audio wasn't great but the content was awesome uh nice great young man uh he's doing big things and i'm happy for sean because sean has been a diehard u4 racer sean, i mean i think sean races everything rc i don't think he has any if it's rc he has it uh but he's been pushing this and it died and it's coming back and he, he takes care of the track that they have there at uh ctrc in socal and he's just a great dude and i'm glad he's i'm, I'm happy for him that he's getting to be a part of this because he just loves rc and uh he's a good dude good dude good dude so good stuff u4 racing i i really need to get myself one of these and put a 3s in it and um go go just have some fun all right kevin you know what um let's go back to uh off-road eight scale nitro racing yes and before we do that we have to also pay some bills because you know why lugs racing is a sponsor of the podcast and lugs racing has over 55 years of combined experience in rc lugs has been testing treads wheels and rubber for performance to bring you the race of the best performance that you can as well as econ the econ line for the bashers or people on a budget the Lugs Econ line was developed with racing budgets in mind. High quality but lower cost means savings can be passed on. The TQs and Protos, the premium tires, provides performance made by using the Lugs custom molds and their proprietary rubber compound. You can find out more information about Lugs. Their tires come in, I believe their tires come in medium, soft, super soft, and mega soft. You can visit them at www.lugsracing.com. Save up to 30% with the promo code NNRCLUGS in all caps. Uh, actually, was talking to Bryce 
yesterday they're headed up to the pacific northwest um something i just wanted to touch on real quick it's good to see that they're racing this weekend um big hank perry race that it's been going on for 20 something years up there in the pn probably longer than that and this is like a big historic race for them and they haven't been racing much so i'm happy to see that there's a um there's a lot of racing going on this week this weekend rc pro series um a lot of stuff but this past weekend was a race that you and i kind of watched um not watched but i i was actually at the beach so i didn't get to watch it uh, but i i have to sit down and Sucks i was watching the scoring you. i was watching the scoring so um i, uh, I actually watched the race i was uh wrenching and building a new uh, two-wheel drive for uh, uh next weekend and uh, i was able to watch a good portion of the race you know what dude Toby hansen with 46 rc and one camera did a better job than live covering that race, which a bigger track outdoors did a better job than live rc did at silver state i'm just gonna say that yeah, but live RC. <laughs> I know I why live RC didn't have. I know why. I'm just saying. But he had. I, a, I didn't. He had a, I didn't get the chance to to listen to JQ Rent and the, to your famous calm your tilt, calm your tits comments. But uh, I think live RC didn't really have a lot of luck with the internet. That mm -hmm. sucked. Um, but uh, we can show Their that sucked. Uh, they're getting new cameras. But anyway, I'm just shout out. I got to plug 46 RC. Toby uh, Hansen. He did, he did a, a good, good job. job. Yeah. Um, I didn't even think he was filming. I think it was the wife of the owners of LCRC, which honestly, uh, um, I've been dealing with them setting up for my trip to the nationals and they've been nothing but uh, really helpful and pleasant while doing that. So I'm really looking forward to meeting them and uh, learning about them as well and seeing their facility. There's a local racer that went to race there for the first Mugen Challenge two years ago, I think. Um, and they had nothing but good comments about the place. Mm -hmm. um, everybody loves it, even Adam Drake and uh, Rajay111 that uh, talks mm -hmm. about uh, went to, to race there uh, last year in 2020, and uh, he had nothing but good comments about uh, the facility. Yep. Uh, so I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. And I loved, I absolutely loved this track. Um, it had a long uphill corner type thing, and it came done and it, i don't know what they were doing on the far end like with that oval type thing yeah but the option line i didn't, didn't quite yeah, get it oh that's what it probably was yeah an option i didn't get it but maybe that's you something could they take just it done. or not take it it wasn't a joker line it, it uh -huh. depended on what the line that you had maybe it's a short track different. run i don't know maybe it's for beginners i don't know um but i saw some guys use it oh you did yeah I yeah, yeah. It. okay but you, you were you weren't as fast because the other line was a long sweeper mm -hmm. it, it was weird i don't i don't quite un get it but uh we'll probably right. see some in the comments so <laughs> uh i really think I'm, I'm this just got me super even more excited for the nationals just watching this and it was actually pretty stacked um we had not everybody there but let's let's look at the uh let's look oh. here we Techno had, went in full force with besides uh, Wiggins, all besides yeah. Wiggins. He, he had to, he had prior engagements with another track. Um, yeah. what? he was with Tyler, I think. Techno, uh, sent the full team or Seth, Jared, Bornhorst, um, Jones, Jones. Oh my gosh, another DNF for him. It looks like I don't know what's going on with Jones. We, I don't know. Um, okay, Fend, we gotta say it. Fend went there and he unfended himself. I like okay. In buggy, uh, in buggy, in buggy, in buggy. I didn't really worry about truggy. I'm sorry, I didn't look at any truggy results. He broke. I have okay, okay, that's all right. Now, this is my thinking. Her does this make up for Fend's abysmal performance at at? No, of course not. It doesn't make up for what happened at Silver State. But it definitely gives him some confidence and much needed practice going in and to be able to finish this race even though it's only 25 minutes i don't understand why it's only 25 minutes but well uh, electric mains were six minutes the the maybe rain i think they no they had a lot of people so i think they really did condense everything so people okay. could get out of, of there and it, it rained the next day so maybe they mm. were expecting rain at the end of the day so they were trying gotcha. to to crunch it got you okay that makes sense um 
so Fen goes up there. He wins. Uh, he wins by five, but over four point five seconds over Tebow. I think but Tebow. He, would, I, I saw it. He he was faster than Lutz before he passed him. He was faster. He would bobble and lose the lead, then drive back out. Um, I think it's really good for him because it's one thing to to not fend yourself at a race. It's another thing to be top two, three, four, or five, but it's another thing to be able to put all the elements together and finish uh, finish first. So that I'm I'm happy for him because everybody mm -hmm. wants Sven to do well. He's all he's always been on the cusp. Oh, it's your turn to choke. Uh, he's always been on the cusp, but he's due for something good in eight scale. So mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, perform a bit better. Um, he was doing so well with JC tires at the, the beginning last year, 10 scale, he was doing, uh, really, really well. And when he moved to eight scale, something just wasn't right. Um, do you know who, uh, his mechanic was, uh, at Not uh, Barry Baker. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> wasn't him. him. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't Barry Baker, but probably just him or he probably just went and did it himself. Um, which I believe he's capable of Tebow. I would think Tebow would want to win. The, okay. Um, we're going to talk about the what what do warm up races mean anything anyway here in a minute but um i think they do and i think jared tebow he would want he would want would want to win this but he did it but he, he can take a positive result out of out of second and practice and information ryan lots the so w w r c driver there they uh, congratulations ascended rc They've become the new, um, and Matt Kennedy, they have become the new distributors. Maybe that's a little bit more stabilization for Ryan in his career right now. He's going to have Rob Isaac, who's going to be helping him. I don't think Rob was there this weekend because he had a race himself to put it on. So Lutz needed time up her. He was also at um, a race a few weeks ago here too, doing well. So he's getting in practice. Seth Van Dalen, fourth. Yeah, good result for him. He would... You know, I'm sure a lot of these guys probably, I don't know if they, no, man, I, people say they don't, I believe these guys take it serious and, um, yeah, they, they so might, they might have been testing new parts or stuff yes, like that. Right. That too. Um, they're there to test, but they're there not to, not to finish, uh, right. behind anyone. So. Yeah, they don't like to finish. They don't like to lose to anybody. Nope. Uh, our guest this weekend, Aiden Horn, another another positive fifth man. He came fifth at Silver State. This kid is is this young man is super attacking, aggressive with eight scale, and he's only just started racing eight scale yeah. like this uh, this year. Jo Joe Bornhorst, I'm sorry, that's where he kind of usually is or below. Um, but testing again, Jacob Hardison, Cole Ogden, like Cole was so fast at this track at the Mugen Challenge. Um, I would expect him to be up higher. And he was just never a non-factor in this race at all. He was way down. Tater Sontag, another. Jason Schreffler is a local Northeast fast guy. He's really good. He's a little yeah. older, but he's really good. <clears throat> Tater Sontag, racing a lot, Tater. Good to see. Ethan Mechanic, another Northeast fast guy. <clears throat> Tyler Jones, man. I still don't know what he flam flamed out apparently at on this and i don't know what happened at silver state I, I didn't read his report yet um he's gotta cut these dnfs man he's so fast but these dnfs are really hurting him and um he needs to get it get that figured out i would say because he needs to become the truth really good in qualifying really did good in the b mains and all that stuff but something happened in that a main at silver state and aaron kaufman is a, another northeast <clears throat> northeast let's, fast guy let's not forget that um it seems like the guys that perform on eight scale are <clears throat> always a bit older a bit more seasoned a bit more experience or racecraft or whatnot tyler is growing he's uh, still very young um he's blistering fast he has a lot of talent but sometimes just shit happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i would agree i would agree um i really enjoy the surface of this track too uh i think we're gonna it's gonna get a little bit rough at the nationals too which is good it didn't get it, will. it didn't get so rough yeah that, that's that's a nice outdoor it's loose ish uh mm -hmm. you're you'll be running on pins um but remember get... dude they can't do any work not that they did any work to this track at this race which i doubt they did but you, 
the nationals you cannot do anywhere the they're allowed to water right they can water yes they because they would have to for dust or whatever um obviously they let like people do like if it's dangerous if it's deemed dangerous that you can do work on it or if it's really really bad maybe but um this track seems to hold together i don't think it's going to get like vegas blown out or anything like that but it's going to get i don't want to say that well it's going to get some personality and character um, ding no i'm not using that word uh, it's going to get some personality i think and i hope it gets a little bit not not a lot we shall see we shall see um no rifkin no rifkin there were there wasn't any big names without uh like there was oh. a couple of guys but drake wasn't there and mayfield mm -hmm. wasn't there rifkin wasn't there um, i'm surprised no mugen well mayfield's i think still recovering because um he actually said in his interview he had COVID. did you hear his yeah. race yeah so he's probably still recovering from that um and then go into that race and silver state probably wasn't a good thing for him either breathing all that nasty air and stuff in there so uh yeah but i mean aiden went which is good but i thought rifkin would be her um i understand he was testing why somewhere else too yeah maybe tanner denny or something that nah, tanner denny i don't know where it where it but we shall see we shall see i like i don't think uh Mayfield was her last year. It's probably like, yeah, I've been there already. But I, I mean, I, I still think they should go. They should go. It looked great. It just gets me excited. I can't wait to see how they change this track. They've been putting in a lot of new speaker systems, lights, new everything. Um, here, so the the people at LCRC are going all out, and this, you know, the reason I'm so hyped up about the Nationals is this is the first real sanctioned eight scale race since last year. Like when I mean sanctioned, like since 2019 since the actual sanctioned eight scale race so it's a big thing it's a really a big thing so i'm really excited uh, any, all, anything you want to add i think uh since dnc uh the probably the order of uh the pegging order uh, changed a bit um like you said a huge fan of the surface is it going to break up it didn't break up too much probably they had a bad luck in one of those turns but uh it should be a really good show and i can't wait to see the nnrc there it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun it's too bad you ain't can't come because i think you was trying to come to this race wasn't you yeah, yeah. you're can't a bunch go. of canadian guys which brings me up to my next question oh canada um oh, i heard canada. that yeah i heard that uh that canada's supposed to open alberta's supposed to open july june 1st my buddy was telling me today will um, ty make it to the nationals well we're going back into the right uh, direction we're closer to what's going on in the states the cases are going down everything's going back to normal ish um hopefully they'll be able to to cross the border um i haven't heard anything uh oh. hopefully he can if he can't, means he he'll be able to attend the Canadian Nats, the Canadian Championship at uh, Bego, the the J Concept Race at uh, Bego Racing. Um, but uh, I hopefully will be able to to see him there. I know that um, there's a young there's a young uh, racer in Ontario that's called uh, Dylan Raposo, and mm -hmm. he and his dad, uh, X Ray driver that just got on uh, J Concept too. Um, they were looking to go to the Nats, but going back and forth, and you have to quarantine on the way back. There's over four grand for one trip. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't have paid travel, it's a uh, it's a hell of a it's a hell of a, a fee. So I don't know about uh, Ty. I really I'm really hoping. Uh, I hope we'll he get goes to too. See him. Yeah, me too. I, I think the hot rate tires are going to be pretty uh, pretty good there. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see. I hope we get the Canadian Wanda there. All right, my dude, I think that's all we have for RC News right now. Um, we're going to go on to the Sun City RC Raceway Don and Quiet segment. Um, yeah, I think that was good. A lot of news we covered right there. So okay. let's go on to the Don and Quiet segment, dude. Sun City RC Raceway, the home of El Paso's world-famous motocross-inspired eight-scale off-road track. The Showers family has over 20 years' experience creating one of the premier tracks in the USA. Their world-class facility has everything. Handicap accessibility, covered beds, skate starts, 
space for parking RVs, trailers, and lights for night racing. Follow SCRC on Facebook under Sun City RC Raceway for updates, upcoming races, or host your own race. And that's yes. another track I'd love to visit. They seem like a, they have a pretty sweet setup. They are very nice. They're investing a lot of money into their to their track. The Shawas family are awesome. Shout out to Joey, Christian, and Corbin. Uh, they have the RC Pro Series West Finals this weekend there. So everybody attending that race, have fun. Send it without responsibility. Drink lots of beer and do RC things. Uh, congratulations to them and thank you to Sun City RC Raceway for all their support. We greatly appreciate it. So, Kev, um, pretty simple topic for the dawn and quiet this week. Uh, I had this discussion with JQ. I actually uh, prior to we actually was I was watching Rip on our uh, Radio Impound podcast. It was live. You was on there too. So I asked Jason. Uh, and this is my topic for the SCRC, Dawn and Quiet. Do warm-up races mean anything? Are they worth it? Um, and Jason's thing was, no, they don't mean anything, right? But I think they, and he, I think he said they might not be worth it. Um, and I wonder if this is true, because I actually think they, they do mean something. I think they are worth it. And I understand maybe every, okay, in America, it's a little easier. They to travel to Pennsylvania, they went, obviously, if a world's warm up is in Australia, it's going to be hard to go to Australia twice in a year. You know, I get that. But I think this is something that um, that we're lacking nowadays because we have a lot of one off races as well. You know what I mean? Build a track and then you race and it's gone the next day. So uh, uh, the whole RC thing has changed. But if you talk to guys like Greg Dagani, he absolutely believes in warm up races and going on there and doing this. And um, he actually doesn't get. You know, Greg gets a lot of flack and he says they people say he gets lucky for being the first ever, you know, winning his world championships. And he's um, he was the first ever American world champion. But what what they don't really like, what they don't like to say is, well, Greg went on to do warm up and he was on there for like a month practicing. And he, he did things like that. And him and him and Chad Bradley went on and he did everything that was needed to get there. And he always says. Like he uses Vegas, uh, the Vegas 2016 worlds, he goes. If I was Cody King and if I was um, Ryan Mayfield, I would just get a place in Vegas and I would go to that track two to three times a week or every day. And I would run that on that track as much as I could and just live in Vegas as much as I could and get ready for that. I know that's a little more difficult now because they have such busy schedules and stuff like that. And he said, well, these guys just said it's another race. And it's odd. I mean, I get it. Budget wise, it's that's expensive. There's many ways of seeing that answer from Jason. Is he talking about a uh, mm -hmm. racer point of view, owner of a company point of view, um, manufacturer? There's a lot of things. So obviously, um, you have B team drivers, team drivers, uh, factory drivers that go at that track, test tires, uh, test different compound, tread patterns, different mm -hmm. conditions for chassis guys they go and test different setup parts and all that stuff and they relay that information back to the the mothership mm -hmm. um so obviously having some experience on that surface is always good uh if you went in 2018 2019 2020 or 2021 if you didn't change much of your uh, of your package uh chances are it's going to be very similar so they maybe that's why we didn't see much of the mugen guys because they have uh uh some experience on that mm -hmm. uh on that track and the other reason is can you explain to the listeners what's the um what's the the the, the, the setup and the the different days for the mats like does it start on wednesday thursday it's, how many practice days how does no, it work it actually they i think this year they like they, they did it in 2019 i think wednesday they'll have like a track where, uh, where the actual facility charges you to race and they make some money off that and it's like open practice i don't know if it's going to be in heat so whatever right but the official practice starts thursday and then qualifying starts friday and the qualifying's mixed like you know so they do truggy you know like and remember because buggy is going to be run if mar style truggy is run a finals and it's not it's not separate days like uh like um like dnc 
But I, I totally agree with you on that point, testing and finding out what works. But I actually think that it's also a confidence booster too. I, I People would say, Jeff's like, it doesn't mean nothing. I'm like, man, shut up. Like, you don't think Fenn feels good that he went out there and beat majority of his peers, the majority of his peers. There were some not, you know, I mean, he had, he had, he had Tebow, Lutz, Van Dalen, Bornhorse, I would say Aiden Hornander, Cole Ogden, and Tyler Jones. Those are That's all mostly guys. all people that beat him too. Yes, exactly. Uh, maybe not Aiden Horn as much, not yet. But he, well, he's beat him. He beat him in the last. He's beat him in the last couple yeah. races. Um, so just had a loud bike start there. I I absolutely feel this does give a confidence booster. Like I I I I think that Tebow goes into this race. Tebow is like that. Like he he. I think he's a guy who needs a lot of practice. He likes to have a lot of practice and feel really comfortable at a race, a track to do do good and feel good. I absolutely. If I was techno, I would have made this absolutely mandatory for my team to be there too. I would. Yeah, but guys don't want me to be in charge of a, like properly. Like, give me money, and I will be a dictator to these teams. I'd be like, everybody at fuel warm up. We're gonna get a house, and we're gonna base. We're gonna be based out of Pennsylvania, and we're gonna go to that track as much as possible. That's what I would do. Maybe they want to go back when it's not a race and they'll be able to test and uh, do their own thing on their own pace. Um, Mayfield, I don't think he'd really needed more confidence. He's, he swept everything that but, was able to sweep. But Mayfield has not made a, 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 a final in the Nationals in three years. Yeah, but it's that bad luck. You know, in three years in a row? But going to the warm ups not going to change anything. He's back on a good motor. He his program is pretty pretty solid right now. It, mistakes happen. There's so many <laughs> fluke errors that happen. That's I don't think uh, going to warm up or not. Yes, I agree. that could break his confidence too. Being by himself, not having a lot of help, um, not having the right tires for whatever reason, shows up to the race. Oh, screws! Up. Let's say Mayfield goes there and he finishes twelfth. Now his confidence go completely down. Well, I I agree. Mayfield probably is probably going to win this if he makes it anyway. Um, I hope. But I, I mean, I can't say that. But I can say that every person that is in this A man should be there. Like I definitely think that Safin and Tebow, Lutz, Fend, Ogden, Jones, these guys should be there. And um, it's good to see Horn. I like that. I like to see that they are sending this. Maybe it's not you know. Definitely helps with testing. I think it means something. Like anytime these guys, we get these guys to race together nowadays, it means something to me. Uh, or maybe, maybe the, maybe that it doesn't mean nothing to them, you know. But I highly doubt that. I do highly doubt that. Maybe they want to go back testing, uh, being alone, not a lot of cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be able to to bring everything from the kitchen sink and uh, see other stuff, you know. Yeah, good stuff. But anyway, I I don't really have. I think it matters. Joseph doesn't. Jason Renner does. Yo on defense. I think it matters. I think I think it means a lot to him. It means a lot to me. I got excited about this. Oh, I got excited too. Yeah. Um, I wish we had a. The only thing I, I didn't really enjoy about that coverage is I wish that we would have heard the announcer better. Okay. Through uh, live mm -hmm. RC, but it was great to have a good camera decent internet quality and we'll we were able to to see what was going on um that's and, the only complaint i have yeah and you can go see the i think toby has caught up the main so you can go see them they're on his youtube channel oh, I don't know if it's, it up. yeah or well, it's definitely on his uh on the 46 rc facebook channel i'm not sure of his youtube channel right now all right uh kevin i think um that's all i have to say about that i think that's all we got to say this week um thank you for coming on man i greatly appreciate it i know you work and i know you do your full into rc so thank you for your time appreciate um, it thanks for having me yeah um we're gonna actually now have the finish finish idiot i don't know what to, if i'm gonna call him what i'm gonna call him this week because he went he went like so many different personalities on last week's rant so i don't know where to start but jq is gonna join us for the uh, Beach RC Bench Racing Q and A. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. 
BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. And thank you, Beach RC, for the continued support. They are a brick and mortar hobby shop doing big things in the RC. I'm looking forward to hanging out with Brent at the Nationals here next month. If you guys can, please show them some love by using the affiliate link that is in the written description of this podcast. And joining me with a smirk on his face to my right is, I don't know what to call you now. I mean, it's like Beaker. And then you went all Rupert the Sheriff last time you was on on here. So I would argue that it's your left. I'm on your no, left. No, really, if right now that's my right right there. No, that's, that's your my left. left. That's my left, but your left, but it's on the right. I know. It's crazy. This stuff's messing me it's up. Not crazy. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. You got crazy. But anyway, um thank you to Beach RC for bringing you the bench racing QA. Thank you, JQ. You're actually drinking water today and not alcohol, or is that it's just straight, straight up vodka. vodka? No way, you're lying. I'm not lying. You know that you might that this might be the sign of alcoholism right there, buddy. Um that's water. Gotta be water. Ugh. Anywho, welcome, Josie. How you doing? Uh, we have some questions for you today, okay. and it, you're joining us for the Beach RC part, and then we're gonna go. Then you're gonna join us later for the rant. So we actually don't have many questions today, but I think we can give them some some better detail. So the first question for us, Joseph, comes from Benjamin James. He is an announcer at Coastal RC. He asks if you could sanction a class for an Ifmar World Championship that doesn't already have one, which would you choose and why? I know my answers, so I'm going to give you, let you go first. Oh, God. <clears throat> which class that I don't want to have a world, should I give a world? Well, it's, it's um, got to be one class that needs a world that we can do alongside the Nitro worlds. Yeah, That's e not alongside. Not alongside. Yes, it would make but, sense doing it alongside it. No, it wouldn't. So for cost, it should of be a it would. No, it should be a separate event. It's long Joseph. enough. The race no, is no, long no, enough. No, 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 Just no, focus no. on one class at a. No, world. no, no. You can you you can run e. I think okay. First off the bat, e buggy should be a world's event, and it should be run right along with the nitro worlds. Why? Because you're using the same tires. You're using the same parts from your car. You don't have to travel twice. You are there for five days as it is. You can fit e buggy in there. Only if they do it like uh, ten scale, where it's like Euros is three days two wheel drive, three three days four wheel drive. Okay, if they do do that, then okay. I could, I I'm okay with that too. Maybe they could switch the track up a bit. That would be great. Like, no. yeah, man, switch it up a bit, like they do between the two wheel drive and four wheel drive worlds. I think that'd be awesome. And then everybody starts on a fresh track. No practice, you know, not fresh, but I definitely think it's e-buggy. It's growing and people are like, well, what about Truggy? I mean, maybe, but honestly, like in Europe, Truggy really isn't popular. It may be, a, it's, it's a bit popular in Asia and, and Australia. It's obviously popular in America. Maybe that too. Maybe we do no. a Truggy. Yes. E-buggy or nothing. I'm all for the e-Truggy worlds. Let's do that. E truggy worlds, but definitely, I definitely think it's e buggy. I like to see fifth scale too. Fifth scale offer it become a world championship. Jay Zellner, what's the latest on RCGP? Any rounds confirmed? Will Lefty be drinking beer if the Nets? If so, what beer? Uh, no, there's no rounds confirmed because what well, uh, well, you would know, Joseph. What's the latest on RCGP? I mean, the calendar still has the RC of Nations, which will obviously can't happen. So that's in October in, in Europe. And then there's another one. There's an RCGP in November in America. So those yeah. two races are still potentially could happen. So there's still hope for two, at least one uh, yeah. RCGP this year. Yeah. I, it it, it all, all depends I, on the restrictions for exactly. travel. Exactly. 
exactly i'm i think i think because in america it's so open people kind of fail to realize that europeans still can't travel there you know what i mean but i mean they can but it's just such a hassle like no they well, can't well i saw toby hampton went to england and came back but then it's probably different because it's like got an english passport and lives in america and stuff like that well, too yeah. So yeah, you just can't travel to America right now and nobody knows when that's going to be lifted. So it's hard to even plan anything around that. that I'm, and you, you got to get away from the, you got to turn your volume down. I'm hearing feedback, Joseph, You're too close to your mic. It's too sensitive. Uh, any news on the, on episode three, I heard possibly soon, maybe in the next month or so, a couple months. I can't remember. Yeah. I have to, I'll have to ask David about that. I know episode three is being worked on. So, um, yeah, unfortunately we can't plan RCGP when you can't, and I, I think people just, and people are like, well, they can travel and you can travel to this. It's just so it's, it's just, it's not like that. It's so much, even to travel in Europe, it's a pain in the pain in the arse. And will I be drinking? No, I think I'll be up. I think as I get to the nationals, it'd be like a year that I haven't had a drink. Maybe, maybe, have a drink again? maybe at the nationals, I'll have one. I don't know. Like, um, I just miss beer. Honestly, <laughs> I do. Um, so I've been drinking, I've had a few non-alcoholic beers. It's just not the same. It tastes good. How, uh, how much do you weigh now? I'm still heavy. That's the problem. Well, so how much? Like three. How something. much have you lost? I don't know. I don't think you I don't have know lost how much any. weight you've lost. No, I don't. I just go by how well, I surely feel. You've lost weight. Yeah. But I, no, because then I was eating like crazy. You know, one stress relief went to a different one. No yeah, but exercise. you've lost weight in the last year. Yeah, but I don't worry about that. I just worry about how my clothes fit and all that stuff. So I need to lose more weight. I wasn't able to walk much this week, but I'm going to go walk in today to get that get back active. And I got a trail run to come up. I've got a trail thing before I go to uh, America. So I look forward to that. Uh, but I might 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 have a might have a uh, light. I see they got all these nice new seltzers out, low carbs and, you know, very refreshing. Maybe I'll have a, one of them. Or maybe I just won't have a drink at all and just keep on going. It's been pretty positive since I stopped drinking, to be honest with you. So, uh, Maddie Kate, she asked, what would be the best budget-friendly way to convert a TLR 22 SCT 3.0 to a no-prep drag car? Maddie, honestly, that this is more of a Nitro podcast. So I would su suggest you hit up um, my buddy Sean Rusin or Tyler Zavado of RC Drag Talk. They also have a podcast called the Missing Link RC Podcast. And I think Sean just re recently did a TLR conversion. So he will be able to help you as well. And check out them, guys. Sean's been a longtime supporter of the podcast. And yeah, good stuff. <clears throat> All right, let's get a few more. Okay, we have we only have a few more questions here, Joseph. Uh, G Spec RC Tuning, what's up, G Spec? How you doing, man? My boy's making some some badass. Uh, what is that noise, Joseph? I don't know. There's no noise here. Maybe it's in your head. No, he was doing something just now. That's what you're not paying attention. I can see you're up to no good. I see it in your eyes. I wasn't uh, doing anything. Yes, you were. Uh, G Spec makes some badass uh, leads. If you're looking for some leads, he does custom leads and all that stuff too. He says, "Hey, what's up, fella? What do you make of the OS price increase, and how much do, impact do you think it will have on the industry?" Well, I saw that OS. At, I think it was last week. People were freaking out. I kind of waited, but like A Main and a couple other websites had OS is at almost a thousand dollars, right? And when I finally did post it, because I waited like two days because I wanted to see if it was a mistake. Someone said, oh, they just, it's going back to normal now. So what I think what happened was uh, there was some mix up in the algorithms or something with A main's websites and the price was just that, but has, have they gone up at all? Period. Let me get on A main. Joseph, I don't know. I think it was just a glitch. I've seen A main have those glitches before. And sometimes you get, things that are less price and like for less prices they for less than the pr prices back. Yeah. But they so they're back to high. normal. Well, I mean, it's like anything. Let's see. And uh, OSB. It was like the Drake edition ones were like $900, like almost a thousand bucks. No, they all were. Oh, they were all were. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, anyway, they're all back they on to normal. Well, I don't know if it's normal, but I mean, it's time. five thirty nine for uh, OS Adam Drake point twenty one. I think that's pretty normal. So, for an OS, most guys are buying these OS engines out of Japan anyway. You know. Salty Joe, all them guys buy the engines out of Japan. You can buy like the Ronda Drake engine right out of Japan for way cheaper. It just comes uh, unassembled. So I don't know. It's back to normal. All right. Another Instagram question from Hyperfox, Hyper, <laughs> Hyperfox 2.1. What do you think about Ryan Styles' last video? Is it me or is he using Patreon subscribers' money to make more money on selling t-shirts? So did you see... Um, Ryan Styles Harris new product line called Roost. It's funny, he's made a shirt called no. Roost, right? He's talking about Roost this and Roost that, but he's primarily a 10 scale driver and there's no Roost in 10 scale clay racing. So, I don't get it. But I get in it is Florida a they race uh, outdoors, don't you? Don't they? 10 scale. Yeah, but yes, but not I I think he's primarily a clay indoor racer. But he's come up with his own 80s themed white t-shirts called roost and when he made a it was a you know one thing about ryan styles harris his videos are definitely his his production quality is really great i en i enjoy i can um, admire that so he had like the oakley's on a mullet mustache and revealed it and i guess he has a patreon now and so he has some patrons and i'm going to say a few things first off i have a patreon people pay into it you have a Patreon, people pay into it. I pay into other people's Patreon too. I think I pay into your Patreon. At one point oh, I was thanks. paying my, at one point I was paying you to pay me. I, I realized that and then I stopped paying you. Um, <laughs> But I do pay into a couple of Patreons. And to be honest, man, what those people do with that money is what they want to do with it. Like when you give somebody money, okay, I'm not saying go out and blow it on blow and hookers, but you know, I mean, if that's what you want to do, go do it. I hope you don't do that um that's what i do you know you right now you're drinking straight vodka so i don't know um it's and it's but it's it's, it's in the evening time there so you're right but just straight vodka joseph i don't think you're drinking straight vodka anyway but anyway you are finnish and english mixed and many other things mixed so who knows uh as for t-shirts with with ryan styles harris so when I did my, when we did our Patreon, you set it up and we, we kind of gave a, a certain tier t-shirts at first. I'll be honest with you, man. We went to get t-shirts made, like specialized t-shirts that I gave away to those patrons that won that upper tier. It was so expensive. It's so expensive to make 10 t-shirts. Well, it was for me. Um, and I offered, you know, I offered them for sale to patrons as well, because there's only a one run of t-shirts. If he wants to give his patrons first crack at these shirts, I don't blame him. I mean, that's what being a patron is all about. I didn't, he don't have many, he had maybe 10. So yeah, he has to, like, you don't want to lose money. I mean, we, we literally, I'm sitting now, like we have four or five shirts that we can't sell because they were so expensive, you know? So to make just one off run shirts, maybe he's going to make off, I mean, make shirts, uh, make mass quantities of shirts, which would be good. But uh, even even Patreon has a, a merch shop that you can link and have all your merch there and all that stuff. And I think that might be the way that I go with um, with this her eventually too. So we shall see. But uh, I mean, his Patreon's there to make money. I think it's a good test to see if they they want to buy. I, I mean, if they will sell. And I mean, if you support the guy, buy a shirt from him. I mean, that's how it works. I don't. I mean, like if I support, if I want somebody, I just literally just bought a raw national shirt. I'm not racing in the raw nationals, but I'm going to the event. LCRC is making them. They're being very nice to me for going up there. And they've been very helpful to me and my questions and whatnot. I want to, I want to keep stake from this, from the event. So I ordered a shirt. I literally just did it and I paid full price, 25 bucks for it. It is what it is. T-shirts cost money too, man. T you know, so um maybe he can give discounted pricing to his patrons that would be good that's what i would do you know give them to at cost but it's nothing wrong with people trying to make money and once you give that patron money it belongs to them what do you think joseph what was the issue i missed it well basically this guy uh ryan sauce harris uh has a patreon right 
Not many. Yeah, but what was the problem? Like, this why guy, was this guy, complaining? this guy, he was asking about the video. He says, "Is it me, or is he using Patreon subscribers' money to make more money on selling T-shirts?" That's actually a smart thing to do. Like, that money belongs to him. Like, if you give that money, if I give you five bucks, Joseph, whether you go buy more vodka or or whatever with it, whether you go buy a self help book from it, like, you know, or whether you use it to go get go to the doctor and get treatment for your autism. Whatever, I give you that five dollars. You can treat that. Well, you know, so what I mean. maybe. Does he mean that he gets money on Patreon and then he buys T-shirts to sell with that money? Oh, he's making his own T-shirts. Program? Yeah, he's making his own T-shirts. He's made his own thing called. Oh, yeah, Roost. yeah, yeah. But he pays to makes those T-shirts with money from Patreon. Is that this guy's issue? Yeah, but he's only got about ten Patreons, patrons. Like, I don't think he's yeah, made. Yeah, I don't know how much. Don't make much money on Patreon in the RC world. Yeah, it's. What's the issue? Like the that's his Patreon is supposed supposed to make it financially possible to do whatever that creator mm -hmm. is doing. So in this case, videos. So if people support the Patreon, they want to do that because they want to see videos. So as mm -hmm. long as he keeps doing videos, then it's so, sort of serving its purpose. He's not making a lot of money on ad revenue, you know. No, yeah, it's so. like. He's not got a whole bunch of sponsors. Uh, yeah, and that money belongs to him. I mean, we we get a, a good bit of Patreons in here, and I appreciate all of them. I use Patreon money to buy, like, a GoPro. Um, I use Patreon money to get me an RC boat her recently. Stuff like that that I'm going to have fun with and, and take video with and stuff like that. I also use Patreon to pay bills. You know, that's it's like a salary, you know? People support you so whatever he wants to do i think he's trying to say is like oh he's trying to make double the money off the patrons well maybe the patrons get the first crack at having these shirts that's how it works too like you know when if i had a new shirt coming out i give it to the patrons first you know so i have no issue with that i have no issue with it i i don't know about the shirt that's it's white and like with fluorescent and that's if you use that at an RC track, you're gonna get dirty. But it's more like I guess not to use at an RC track. So who knows? All right. Uh we have one more question and that's it, Joseph. Uh this comes from my buddy Mike Driscoll. He's in Wales. He just got a JQ car. Uh he wants to know how <laughs> how does the Mayako and your lap times compare to your B E times, your black edition times so far? And what differences do you feel when driving the Mayako compared to your, uh, your probably your best setup, Black Edition? Uh, I would say that the, sort of the main difference between the Black Edition and the Mayako is that normally when going to, to a track with the Black Edition, the setup changes and the goals are really to make the car sort of easier to drive so that I can drive faster. Mm -hmm. So there's usually some sort of issue that I can identify and then I want to eliminate that issue. Whereas now with the Mayako, it's the opposite in a, w in a way where typically when I go to the track, the car feels very safe and easy and stable and mm -hmm. I need to make it faster. So there isn't... <laughs> The issue isn't really sort of a negative problem of just trying to drive fast, like, oh, I have oversteer here, or I almost lose the rear end there, or it doesn't go through this section well. You know, it's more so that, okay, the car is good, but I need more steering, or I need more rotation here, or I need it to be more responsive here. You know, so it's opposite in a way. You start with a good base, and it's safe and easy, and then you make it faster. I would say that that's really the main difference that I've noticed. And for me, um, I am um, when I was testing back to back. So I had my black edition, and then I would throw the prototype down, and that was the one with the front and rear ends from the Mayako and the <clears throat> middle part still the black edition. I would immediately be able to match the best that I had achieved with the black edition. And then I would be able to go faster. Mm -hmm. So, and that was just because it was just, like I said, it was easy immediately. So immediately I was able to match the best that I could do with the Black Edition. I would say if I have to uh, 
generalize a bit you know it's always difficult when i haven't really raced so i don't know 100 percent. but this is my feeling um i am about half a second faster with the mayako compared to the mm -hmm. black edition when comparing to the best drivers in the world so i'm typically i have been about one second off the best lap pace and now I feel that I am about half a second off the best lap pace. So I'm actually curious to see when I go to races that is that true? Or, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> now, jo <laughs> you know what I'm going to say about that. Um, but I'm not, I'm going to, you know, I've, I've just heard that before. Um, and you're not even really got a full, full, full uh, prototype car, right? I mean, you're still using. Yeah, like, now I have. No, yeah okay cool. i mean are you gonna show it to us no uh, I, you reached over there like i thought you was gonna show it to us for a second because i had somebody ask the other day when are we gonna see pics of the miyako is this gonna be another um team magic that's interesting to say i think like i think with the be it gets to a point where it gets where you can't make it some no faster sometimes too you know what i mean and no it's not that it's that it requires more skill from the driver to go mm -hmm. fast yeah that makes sense i'm i'm interested to see like some in-depth pictures and stuff like that um I'm, i have a question what's the eta on that type of stuff it's now uh, it's gonna June. be then when the prototype ship out to the men members so that's okay. going to be august so okay. july august that sort of time you know what's funny about this? I don't know if I talked about this to you, but in the toy world, they do a lot of this crowdfunding, not crowdfunding, but they have like members and all this type of stuff. Like Hasbro has its Hasbro Pulse stuff. So they do a lot of projects like um, for now, like I say for what, like Marvel wants to do a Sentinel. Now they focus on a six inch base, you know, six inches, the their scale of their characters. The Sentinel is like going to be, five times so it's going to the sentinel is going to be about a foot and a half and it's going to be about two feet high right now to make that they kind of had um uh they crowdfunded to an extent so they get members to pay and this ain't cheap it's like 350 dollars you pay for this and so when they get to a certain okay we have when we get to five thousand uh people that want this we go to this we're going to add this and we go to ten thousand we get this and I watched this happen and, and it's it kind of, even though I know Mayaku is like a membership thing and you, you have information and you have the discord and all the stuff, it's not on, like, it's not unusual to see this in other industries, especially in the action figure world, like where they, and this could take up to a year to get these, to get these products. So people just pay because they want it and they know in a year's time they'll have it and they do little updates and stuff. It's months between updates, so it's not unusual. But I know yeah, but us this are is different. The it is, but... Members, yeah, because the members aren't funding the production of the Mayako. Right, Let's right. put it that way. I get that. You know? the, this isn't sort of a crowdfunding thing. It's I get that. It's a different way of selling the car. Right, the but reason, my point was The only more reason to... they are waiting now is because it's a new thing. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. You know, it doesn't make sense also to try and introduce this new system when the car already exists. That's too late. Mm -hmm. You need to introduce it now. And then when it's rolling, it's rolling. And so it's it's different. It's like when Mayako make an e-buggy, it's not, okay, let's see how many we sell. Like, no, Mayako make an e-buggy. And then members get it first, and then uh, normal customers get it later. No, no, when no, it's no, all no. done. But, so it's, it's, was... not, it's not really crowdfunding so it's not no. the same i wasn't comp i wasn't saying it was crowdfunding to an extent i was just saying how people pre-order this stuff and like they only get to see what's going on because they're invited to the like they're invited to the to the you know like to the special whatever they do it i'm not i'm not pre-ordering this stuff so i don't know and um but they just have different levels so when they get to this many people that have pre-ordered they go and put something extra in the package and stuff like that my point was that you did the the regular public doesn't even get to see much of this you know they might catch a quick glimpse or whatever on youtube and all this type of stuff but the people that are paying paying they get regular updates and whatnot so that's just kind yeah. of, and they wait like they order this and it takes literally like a year to happen so it's not unusual joseph i think that's uh pretty much all the 
questions we have for this week, man. I want to appreciate it. Guys, we need those questions. I know, uh, you know, we only had a few this week, but keep them coming. Uh, we need to stump Beaker and whoever else comes on her on Max. Joseph, thank you for answering them. Thank you, BTRC, for sponsoring the Bench Racing Q&A. Joseph, I'm going on to the Techno RC interview with... Um, we have Aiden Horn. It was a great interview. And then I'll be back with you for the uh, JQ Racing Rant. All right? Okay. All right. Now it's time for the Techno RC main interview with Aiden Horn. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC, excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. I've mentioned this young man, this young racer, young man, he's a young man now, uh, on the podcast, he's, 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 Definitely on my radar. He's probably been on radars of many people because he's been racing for such a long time. He's still young, but he's been racing for a long time from the Midwest. But he's recently attacking uh, Nitro aggressively. And he had a really good performance at Silver State and a great performance recently, just past weekend at the Raw Nationals warm-up. So I just reached out to him and said, hey, would you like to come on and have a chat with us? I'd like to welcome, you are a factory AE Aiden Horn now, aren't you? added to the factory roster i've been on my dad's uh satellite team pretty much my whole life so mm -hmm. it's cool to switch it up and i miss them but i'd say i'd say it was bound to happen eventually and mm -hmm. um i think i think we're in a good place right now i got i got a good pro sweet if you guys know who that is that's aiden horn he's uh he's from the midwest where are you where are you from originally aiden uh michigan i born and raised here uh, i plan on hopefully moving out west sometime eventually here to uh be able to run nitro because right now i kind of have to like drive all over the place wisconsin ohio mm -hmm. if i really want to kind of grind out the nitro scene because all the nitro tracks around me kind of got shut down because of like just mm -hmm. unfortunate circumstances really so i try to be a little bit more relevant and how old are you dude uh 18 okay we well, are going 19 soon you told me that's good. You are like in your first year of professional racing, I want to say. And I think you're killing it, man, to be honest. Good year so far. I've been pretty fortunate to have some solid results. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to just keep building off of it, really. Yeah, you, you, you just recently won, which was one of the most exciting 10 scale races I've watched in a while at uh, OCRC. You won the exact RC 10K Overall, you want, I believe you won two wheel drive and then finished second in four wheel drive. Or how, what happened there? Um, I got the win in two wheel drive and I tied for third in four wheel, but my scores were a two and a three. Mm -hmm. So I guess they didn't finish it. They did it off of your individual main event points. So I had a one and a one in two wheel and a two and a three in four wheel. So that added up to seven. And I think um, Brock and Cav and Spencer all had eight, so I was able to get the overall. Thing. The one that the one that Brock won over you, you literally gave that to him. I was like, "Oh no, you made a mistake," and he took it. Brock was fast that weekend too, and so were you, but you was faster, and you held it together except for that one race where you you gave it to him, and it was an exciting race. And congratulations on that, man. Uh, I always like to ask my guests, how did this all start for you? So how did you get into RC? How old was you? What was your first car? When did you start racing and, and whatnot? Um, it was all my dad, really. He was like a, he was like pro racer back when um, I was just a little baby really much. And um, yeah, I mean, there's, there really wasn't no any avoiding it for me because I was just around it all the time. Not that I want, it's just something that was always there. And mm -hmm. once my dad was finished up being a professional racer, he opened up a track and I had to go to the track every day. And believe it or not, I hated it. Like really? I hated it so much because I was just like a little eight year old track every single day, you mm -hmm. know, 
but that's what we had to do. And that was pretty, I grew up at a 10 scale track pretty much. So I ended up getting a ready to run double XT mm-hmm. broke every single part on it. And double XT just by breaking everything. Right. And yeah, we ran low C at the time. And um, yeah, I, it's never really left me. I've never really taken any breaks from RC or anything like that. I wow. just, I started when I was four years old, I 15th straight year driving. So we've been at it. So your dad, uh, who's Alan Horn, by the way, <clears throat> he, he was a pro driver to what level was he a pro driver or was it just 10 scale or. Um, I, I think he doesn't really talk about it a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So he could probably provide some more details on that. But yeah, he was like travel, went to all the big races. He got fourth place in two wheel mod at the nationals in 2004, I believe. Oh, wow. So he was pretty good. Yeah, he was never, pretty good. Yeah, never quite like, like a national champ or mm-hmm. world champ or anything like that. But he was pretty, pretty solid for a while there. Awesome. So it's you and your younger brother. What's his name? Uh, he's my, um, he's going to be 21 next month. So about a, about a two, two year and one month gap. I thought he was younger than us. you for some reason. The, the, what's his name? Your brother. Yeah. Austin. Austin thinks that I'm the older one. You're so but, much taller um, than him. That's why. Yeah. I'm a little taller. I mean, way better looking, obviously. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hey, but, he's got that blonde hair going for him, like like Dragon had for a little while. I, you know, the girls like that. But I don't know. You would know better who who's better looking. Who the girls like? You him? Or, you or him more? Well, we neither of us get any of those <laughs> girls. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're RC car racers. I know they don't. We they... We, we stick with it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, I guess just it's just you and your brother. Do you have any other siblings? Yeah, no, it's just me and my brother here. Okay, we so, got a dog, but we won't call him. What's your dog name? Axel. What type of dog is he? He's a multi poo, a Maltese poodle mix. Oh, okay. He's he's really, he's a little he's a little mutt. He's a bit little mutt. He's like this tall on the table. He's a bit a a bit of everything. Um. Awesome, man. So is your brother as serious in racing as, was he as serious as you? Was he, did he have to do this when he was young too? Yeah, no, actually up until pretty recently, my brother was like more into it and he's, he's like way more talented than he pretty much my whole life. And then when he graduated high school, he kind of got caught up in life, you know, work, Mm -hmm. college and all that. And he hasn't really been racing much. He hasn't, it doesn't seem like he's been like into it as as much as he used to be. Mm-hmm. He's he says it's like a new passion for him nowadays. So he's been at the motocross track instead of the RC track. But he used to kick my butt pretty consistently for a long time, and it's just now starting to uh, these past couple of years. I've been able to get him. So you, you are he's, he was kick- super into it. Yeah, yeah. You kicked his. Did you? He raced uh, in the same. No, he raced in the class below you at Exact, didn't he? Or yes. Yeah, he raced stock for like the first time in like five years. That, that was his first stock race in a while. Like, ran stock worlds, but stock was the only class there. So, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so when you was younger, obviously you was racing ten scale a lot. We're gonna talk about factory tracks and all that here in a minute. Was there any nitro racing in this time? Um, so for about two years like 2017, 2018, around that mark there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it eventually got to the point where we just didn't have enough budget to be competitive in both. It was like kind of pick one. Obviously, 10 scale was the one that we were going to go full, full-fledged full into because it's really relevant around here and it's easy access. So mm-hmm. that's just what we went with. And um, we decided... If Nitro is in the like now, then we'll get back into it. But I never really got like super, super into it. I mm-hmm. got decent at it for a while there, but eventually it just 
wasn't uh, an option anymore. So we had to let it go for a while. So this is like your first time. This year is probably your first time really racing Nitro seriously in a, in a while, I want to say. Yeah, no, this is my first time really attending any of the major events in Nitro. Uh, we went to the State Line King of Kings race a couple times. Mm -hmm. And I did the Roar Nationals in didn't make any of the mains. It, it was nothing spectacular. But other than that, like this is my first DNC, first Silver mm -hmm. State, first AMS. Like pretty much every race I go to will be my first time being there this year. So I'm super excited about it. It's been working out. Yeah, and you've made, I think, majority of your A mains at this. You made the A main at DNC, right? I believe. Um, I got 15th overall okay. at DNC, but they only took 13, so... Oh, you just missed it. Just barely missed the mark there. And uh, I I squeaked it in and had a mechanical issue in the main, and then I made the main at this past Silver State. Yeah, and you finished fifth there. Uh, what did you think of that crazy track? Honestly, that was the most fun I've ever had driving an RC car. Like, that was... I, I love... Cause it's not, I don't really like the, the wide open, just like pitch it sideways. Like it, it's just not really my, my suiting style, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. I like to be a little bit more like and a little bit more calculated. And I think that helped me out a little bit at Silver State because you couldn't just like send it everywhere. Mm. You, you fuck yourself all over the place. Oh yeah. It was, so it was horrendous. I, I, enjoyed that. I liked it for the viewing part. Yeah. Like it made for great racing, and you finished fifth there, I believe, right? Yeah, that's yeah, a, I was able to get up in the top five. That's a great result, man, for your first ever Souls Day. Congratulations. I was pumped on it. Thanks. I was super excited about that. I, it was funny because um, I doubting the, the Nitro part of myself for a while, and I was crossing the line of doing my last lap at Silver State, and Brent's like, congrats, dude. And I was like, I don't suck. I don't <laughs> suck. Let's go. Well, to say that I was... I crossing was... the line, told <laughs> I, Well, when you did go... When Silly Season happened and all that there uh, at the end of 2020 and AE didn't sign anybody, they, they signed you. I was like, are they just going strictly 10 scale here? I was worried about that. And I thought, honestly, that you was just going to... No offense, just be another... A 10 scale racer, because I know uh, with factory tracks, like you said, you cut your teeth on stock and you focus on 10 scale. Uh, it's pleasantly surprising to see you out there uh, doing some nitro racing. I'm on Borna Crime all the time about doing this. Uh, Matthew Gonzalez, I'm like, you need to race nitro, dude. And he's like, I'm going to just run stock and mod. I'll run nitro someday. Uh, he said he's going to run nitro, but we shall see. But congratulations. Uh, who were some of your early influences? Oh, man, I'm getting some feedback there from my voice. Um, who were some of your early influences when you was young and coming up besides your dad? Um, besides my dad? Well, Dakota actually worked with my dad. Like, he worked with my dad. They would go to my dad's track, and he would. my dad would kind of help him you know, kind of work on his cars and get him dialed in. And so I would always look up to Dakota as like, wow, like this kid is like coming up. And he's starting. To... So th then they started battling and Dakota started beating them. And I was like, and then Dakota went on to start winning national titles and all this stuff. And so that, that was one of my biggest inspirations as well. And another thing was Drayton Staub. We, we kind of like say, we met each other at my dad's track and we raced each other like through the Michigan events, like growing up. And it was, it was crazy because we started like a rivalry and I feel like we still have it. And to this day we're, we're, man, we hate losing to each other. Really? Um, yeah. And actually it's funny you mentioned that, or I mentioned that because I'm going to a, a nitro race this weekend with with Drake, and I'm meeting him up at his place, and we're going down to or up to Wisconsin. Where are you guys going to race? Uh, I don't know if you've heard it, Clark RC Park. Uh, it's in Wisconsin. No, I have to look it up on Facebook. Um, man, you are you are serious about this nitro stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I 
ever since Silver State, I've been like super excited to just keep on running it and trying to get better and improving as much as I can because after how the way that like DNC and PNB went and all that stuff, they they were just there's Axel. My dog. Yeah, he's 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 pissed off down there at something. Oh, wow. but after the way those races went, it was um, it was kind of tough to find the motivation to keep on mm-hmm. like trying my best just to go up to these races, put in the 18th. You know that that never feels good at all. Mm-hmm. So Silver State was kind of like a hey, you know, you can do it. Mm-hmm. So. I've been super motivated to try to get back and keep on getting better as much as I can. Well, it's, it's working for you. I mean, you just come off a fifth. Okay, it's a warm-up race. People would say it's, it's not that serious, but I think it's serious. Um, I think whoever does well at that race goes into the actual uh, nationals with some confidence, much-needed confidence, practice, track time. I, I think the, the facility is awesome. The track looked great. It's... I'm really excited about this. Um, so congratulations on that fifth place. I believe Fen won, and I didn't pick him, and he won, because I usually pick him. I'm just going to uh, mute you right here. So with that said, uh, you're definitely improving in Nitro. What has been the biggest learning curve for you coming from 10 scale to Nitro? Really, I mean, aside of, like, the setup and maintenance factor, just to also the biggest thing is like you need to be more willing to crash you know what i mean so like 10 scale i've i've just like focused all my energy into like being extra perfect and mm-hmm. nice and, and nitro that has not worked out for me at all like i i only get my good results when i'm like on the brink of just disaster 100 percent <laughs> of the time Awesome. It's, you gotta you gotta just send it out there. It's the glory, man. I think um one second here. I, I know what I'm gonna do here. I think that it's necessary as to be a pro driver nowadays that you have to be successful in both nitro and tent scale. And I that's what really is what got me excited about you. Uh not excited to see you approaching it so aggressively. So kudos to you, man, and if you're getting f- fifths now, I think uh, it's only a matter of time before you're on the top step, you know. And um, you are you're right now you're with, with AE, so that's a great team to be a part of. You got the world champion Davide Angar, you got Spencer Rivkin to also talk to, Brent Richard, uh, Dustin Evans for ten scale. So you guys, are Neil Craig over there as well, definitely on a good team. But it always wasn't you wasn't always a, a, a factory AE driver that just happened this year. Uh, you was a part of the factory tracks, which I think is a great idea. Um, it's like, I, I want to say factory tracks is kind of like a satellite team of bringing up younger drivers, grooming them to be professional drivers. So why don't you tell me how factory tracks got started and what it's all about and uh, how good it, and what do you, do you think it's beneficial for young racers? Yeah, so it really just started because my dad, a driver, he wasn't the top guy on the team. And even before he was pro, the bottom of the line is that these factory companies and pro teams, they can only really support their top few drivers. They can, like, offer advice and all that stuff and discounts and all that for the drivers on the lower tiers, but they can't really help them as like grow as much as like my dad's team would. Mm -hmm. So completely to try to give the drivers that could have potential some like help Mm -hmm. that could help them actually like exploit their potential, not just, toss them off to the side and oh maybe they'll figure it out you know so it just started out with you your dad and your brother yeah me my dad my brother and um a couple guys that they were all buddies and then they raced he just really just wanted to give them provide factory support mm-hmm. the best he could when they're not actually on a factory team 
You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of kids coming up that they really just need that little bit of guidance and they could X races. And, and, uh, unfortunately the way it all is right now, you're not going to really get that kind of guidance unless you're already winning. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So when you say support, so your dad was just, uh, or was it just your dad or was there other people involved in it uh, or, or involved in it? When you mean support, is it just like helping guys get their car straight, maybe giving tips, helping them mechanic and whatnot? Yeah, so I'm sure you're well aware of this, but 5% of the kids coming up nowadays are just mechanically Not disasters. Yes. Like they're, they are train wrecks out there. So every single person on my team will come over to our house and me and my brother even will like rebuild their whole car, all of their cars with them, teach them how to do everything, what to look for, you know, how to make it competitive and Mm -hmm. keep it competitive at all times from a maintenance standpoint and all that. There's not a person that hasn't like really learned how to properly have a race vehicle, not just a vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's one of the biggest parts. And there's a lot of kids on our team that are financially Mm -hmm. all over the country to go all these races and try to do the best they can. So my dad will, he'll throw him some money here and there be like, Hey man, I want you to be at this race. You know, let's do it. Let's do what we got to do to get you here. I think you could do good and I'm going to help you do good there. You know, I'm not just going to hang you out to dry that, that kind of, Oh, that's Deal. awesome, man. I think uh, we need more of that, especially in in eight scale. We, do, we don't seem to have that because there's no real class separation in eight scale. You have open sportsmen, but there's no real, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you have stock and then mod. We don't have that in, in nitro. But yeah, I'm, I'm also a big proponent of, getting more young races into into RC and getting the stick there. And I know that people say, well, it's for old people and they need their parents and stuff like that. But I, I truly believe in things like what your dad's doing. And I, I couldn't imagine, like, how many how many guys do you have on the team there? Um, we've been hovering around for a number of years now. How many? Sorry, I didn't It hear started you. off as just, like... We've been hovering around about 20 drivers, typically. We don't really Mm -hmm. have enough room for more than that. But above, like, 15 for the past couple of years. And we started off with just a real small group of guys. It was, like, only, like, seven of us. And it's it's grown every now and again. We, The funny thing is, my dad and my brother are the only two left on the team that were the ones, like, original team members you know everyone else is kind of figured out unfortunately well i think they just get older like your brother has and they get into other things <clears throat> who's who's the youngest of the of factory teams of factory tracks right now it's of the drivers yeah um i want to say a kid we just picked up named uh brayden house mm. i believe he is the youngest he's I want to say it's maybe we don't have anyone mm-hmm. younger than like 10 or anything okay, like okay. that. Now, are Let's there, go. is there any rules or uh, specifications you guys look to when you're probably accepting somebody into factory tracks? Like, do you guys have to keep your grades up? What's it, you know, any type of rules that you have to follow? Um, you definitely have to, keep your grades up. We we are, we are lenient on that because mm-hmm. not everyone's a genius, but as long as you're not, then you can, you can still come race for us. And on top of that, you really just, it's not too hard to be on the team. You really just need to be willing to learn and improve and you need to go to races and do the best you can and have a player, you know? Yeah, it doesn't. You don't really need to be amazing at driving Mm because that'll come eventually. Yeah, it it definitely sounds like you guys have got a good thing going on. Who's next? Like, who do you think is uh, the fastest guy on the team right now? Fastest guy on the team right now. Mm 
Uh, I'd say it's a toss up between Kyle Go and Aiden Tice. They're both pretty solid stock racers. I don't think we really have any mod racers anymore, but Kyle and perform really well at the stock races. They both won a class at the Wisconsin Buggy Champs held by Trackside. Aiden won two wheel. Kyle won four wheel. They're both in the A main at the CRCRC race. So the, those are our best guys right now, I'd say. Awesome. Awesome. It's definitely a great idea. <clears throat> I'm all about the youth and getting more of them into RC. So it's, I might have to get your dad on her to talk about, to talk to him and, and talk about a little bit more about factory tracks one day. That would be cool. But for me, you're kind of the guy that made it. So you, you recently, was at the end of 2020, 21, you've joined AE full time. You're now a, a factory AE driver, correct? So mm -hmm. you, you obviously you're 18. So you finished high school and you decided not to go to college, but to pursue an, an RC racing career. Was that a tough decision? Um, I'm going to go to college eventually. Just, I took, I took this year off to good and see where it landed me in RC really, because I didn't want to, I mean, it's going to sound bad, but I didn't really want to go the same path that my brother did because I saw how it kind of sucked him away from it and really just, and I didn't want, I didn't want that to happen to me. And I, I wanted to take this year off and just really give it everything I have, you know? Mm -hmm. And honestly, the main motivation factor for it was after I graduated, I spent my summer working in a construction shop. It was hurting. I worked there maybe six, seven months. And there's a scar on my hand, actually, I have from that job. And whenever I, like, whenever I'm working, I, I see the scar. And I'm like, all right, we don't want to end up back. It reminds me, like, construction shop. Let me do the best I can with this and, and try to hopefully become a professional RC car driver for a long time. Well, that's good. You got a little taste of real life and construction work. And you see, oh, this sucks. Like, I don't want to do this. I have this opportunity to do something that a very small percentile of people in the world get to do. Uh, how did that come about? Like, when did you get the call up to? I like to say this is like getting called up to the big leagues. That's the best thing I can say. Uh, how did that all come about? Um, well, I was on Associated for a while, and I've been doing pretty well in the 10 scale scene for a while now. Like, I've been making the main events everywhere I go. I, I've gotten a lot of top five. Not a whole lot of podiums, but I've, I've at least been relevant for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then last year, uh, 2020, when the COVID breakout happened, I kept on practicing and practicing. I worked really hard because there were some tracks open. I would drive down to Ohio and race at the or drive at the uh, Ohio factory. Mm -hmm. And I did that a bunch. And I, I just worked as hard as I could to, when the, when the COVID break was over, I guess you could say strong as I've ever been in my life. And when the races, when the racing came back, I got all my best results that I've ever had in my life. I, I got, I finally started getting podiums. I got on the surf city podium Last year, I almost won the medal with Dustin Evans for that. And then I TQ Top Gun, got third in that. And then it kind of, yeah, I, it seemed like I didn't really have a choice to not go pro. Mm -hmm. I felt like I should be getting paid for the results I was getting and the work I was putting in. So I asked for it. And it, it was able to work out, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. It's it's honestly this year's honestly been like a dream come true so far. You know what they say, dude? If you do not ask, you so not, shall not receive. Sometimes it's just a matter of fact of asking, and all they can say is yes, no, or maybe. Right, and that that was the thing. I I was in Brent's garage after we had a good talk and. Ended up working on a contract for this year, and it was it was really hard to leave factory tracks. My dad was not super pumped about it at first because you know it 
a lot of history and a lot, a lot of things we've accomplished as a team together. But in the end, it was for the better. So it was tough, but it was good. How does he feel now? Is he happy for you? Is he excited for you as a factory driver? He is. He, I'm sure he misses me, but mm. I, at the end of the day, he, he knows he knows it was good for me, and I'm sure he's excited to see me out here doing the best I can. Uh, now, did you and uh, – that's good. I mean, as a father, you always want your son to do better than you ever done, so I'm sure he's super pumped about what you're doing, especially now that you're making some waves in Nitro and, you know, after that win a few weeks ago at OCRC. Uh was it is it true that you and but I thought you and Renner Connect had got a room had like started live together and were gonna do the RC Pro thing for a while? Or was that something that I just heard? Yeah, we were going to. We were we were gonna try it because me and Tom have been really good friends for a long long time. Kinda have the same situation and the same the same overall goal that we're going towards. And I did live at his house in Iowa for about two months from January, February. That was, that was fun. We, we lived together for a while. And then we were supposed to get a apartment in Arizona around all the uh, Arizona nitro tracks that Spencer and Ryan get to run at. And that was going to be sweet, but just, um, trying to get a little a little bit of a better financial position and it hasn't worked out yet like we want it to but we are still going to try to do it um i don't know if it'll work out but as if it doesn't it doesn't oh dude if you guys move into an apartment in arizona which is cheaper and you can still go to california when you want then that's going to be probably the best time of your young adult life if you ever get to do that so I implore you to do that. It will make you a better racer and it will help you uh, just learn about life a lot faster. So do it. Yeah, that that's the plan. That's that's kind of the whole mindset around it. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to nitro racing. So you went to LCRC this past weekend. You finished fifth there. Tell us some, tell us how you felt about the track, the competition there and your confidence going into the nationals next month? Well, the track thing I've really ran on, because it was like super high bite, and it was like really smooth, and I don't know, I wasn't really... Okay, well, the, first of all, I, I think the reason why we started off so hurting practice, I missed... They, they had practice on Thursday and Friday, and the first time I really got there was Saturday morning, and I was able to run for about a, two tanks maybe before qualifying started. So I, I was a little behind the eight ball there, and the track was actually awesome. Like, the LCRC crew did a really good job with the layout. It was, it was super smooth. They said they packed it differently this time than they ever have before. So it was really smooth. It didn't blow out at all. Like, even when I got there, they had two days of practice on it already, and it was just glass. There was maybe some ruts here and there, but for the most part, it held up amazingly. Like, more – it held up better than any track I've seen, Was this a, Was this a spur-of-the-moment decision so to go there? that went good. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on going to LCRC until – maybe Thursday, Thursday night. What, what I, changed your mind? Basically what happened was I didn't want to, I didn't want to drive to it by myself because it's like an eight hour drive. And I mean, I could do it. I just, I'd rather just stay home and practice in Toledo or something like that, you know? And one of my friends, Austin Wick, another associated driver. I don't know if you've heard the name before. I have, but he said that, He's got school on Friday, but he can go. Him and Paul could go with me, or I could go with them, and we'd be there Friday night and wouldn't get any practice, but at least we'd be able to do the event, and that's better than nothing. So I figured, why not? You know, I'll go do my best and see how it goes. And qualifying was, was so hurting. I qualified 11th. I 
I didn't have a single good run and buggy blew out, barely made the main, but just threw the kitchen sink at the car, Aaron Rodgers, Hail Mary, and it worked out pretty well. That was the best my car was all week, hands down. We still have some room to grow, but but I like I like where I'm at going into nationals. I'm pretty happy with both of my cars right now. And they weren't perfect, but I think I I got some moves in the back pocket. We'll we'll figure it out and get dialed in. Uh, okay, my next question is just what did you learn from this race? As as far as what? Like what kind of standpoint are we learning from like, here? You 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 got some you you high you you a bit confident. I mean, hold on. There we can be like there, not everybody showed up, but the techno team was there. There was some fast guys there. I would say all of those guys can be in the A main uh, next about next month. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different because it's Ifmar style. You got to race in and all that whatnot. But it's, I mean, I know this is testing and practice for everybody, but I think it it definitely boosts the confidence of what. How did your cars work? How did your car? Let's be honest. Techno was the biggest team there. How were the AE cars compared to the techno cars? Co Ogden was the fast HB guys. I know there's a lot of HB guys up there in the Northeast and um, like stuff like that. Like what did you learn going into uh, that you have planned for next month? I know you can't tell me everything, but something that you, you think can help you out next month. Honestly, it was really tough for me to figure out the car because like Spencer, Kurt, Brent, Jackson, Lee, none of those guys were there. And Austin himself doesn't really have a whole lot of experience with our cars either. Mm -hmm. So I really just kind of had to think of as much as I could. I, I got on the phone with Kurt Winger a little bit and he helped me out. But most part, I just kind of had to experience uh, experience what the changes would do. And I learned a lot about the car, like setup wise and all that. So we made some a lot of like diff, diff changes, shock package changes, geometry changes, like really just gaining as much knowledge about the, the platform as I can, because I know I don't have as much time on it as most of the guys on my team. I have to ask, what tires would you want for your main? S3 slide lock, really? but I really wish I had some S2s. Okay. Sweet. I, I'm going to try to find some S2s for the main, <clears throat> or for the national. Is this your first? Uh, na this is your first eight scale nationals, I believe, right? No, you did the nationals in twenty seventeen. So, as we know, this is racing in. You got to do the semis and all that type of stuff. Really, your goal should be make it to the semis, and then anything, you know, after that's a a, a treat because those semis are going to be difficult. A lot of fast guys there. Uh, I think you can make it. I think they will take what they how much how many did they take at uh, LCRC this past weekend to the mains? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. And then so two bump? It's not going to be. No, it was 11 and two. Okay. Yeah, not not very many people in the show. <clears throat> so they'll probably do they'll probably do the top six from each semi and the fastest seven. Oh, I love it. I love this type of racing. Uh, good, man. I think I think you can do it. If you put in a run like you did this I past weekend. I think I can too. Yeah. That's. Yeah. You're winning already if you if you know you can do it. So I, I wish you all the luck. I'll be there. I can't wait to meet you in person, and I'll get to meet. Hopefully, I get to meet your dad and talk to him some more in the associated camp. I'm excited for this. I'm excited to be going to this race and see you guys go. It's gonna be my first race in a long time. So I wish you all the luck, man. And and kudos to you for making that trip to practice. You know what? I'm gonna say this to everyone that went and did the <clears throat> did the warm up because I think these are important, and we're not. The, you know, racist as oh, it's just another race. I'll be good. If you want to win, you should put in the time and practice that's needed to win. And I think that's what you're doing. I saw the techno guys, they're doing that. And it's good to see the young guys because they had the young guys there as well. But good to see you going up there on your own, taking the initiative to go. I saw Rifkin wasn't there. I thought he would be there. So congratulations to you, man. You're doing the things that you need to do to get better. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I, my biggest my biggest fear is looking back when I'm older and regretting not working hard enough. That's for sure. Good, good. That is a good motto to live by. Okay, um, this is what I like to call the future of Aiden Horn. So what does the future hold for you, man? Um, if 
if this doesn't work out, I don't. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's going to work out for you. If this doesn't work out, what would you like to do outside? Would you like to work in the industry? Would you like to work outside the industry? What piques your interest outside of RC uh, to do for a living wise? Even though I think you're going to be an RC car driver. To be honest, that's been the biggest thing. That's that's been what has been the hardest thing to go to. Why I haven't gone to college mm-hmm. because I don't know what. I have no idea. Like the only thing I've ever really put any thought into is becoming a pro RC race. That's the thing that I put all my energy into. And that's all, that's all I've ever wanted. Really. I haven't, even when I try to think of something that would be appealing, it like nothing even comes close to trying to race for a living. So yeah, I, I don't know. That's once I figure it out, I'll, I'll probably try to go to college and come up with a backup plan. But for now, I don't, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Hey, man, you're 18, you're 19. You have plenty of time to worry about that. Uh, follow your dreams. That's what you're doing. I'm a man that done that himself, so I admire that. And, I mean, you are a professional racer. It's just a matter of now you getting better and making those, big, you know, making those contingency checks, making this a full-time uh, living, like you are, but where you make some good money and stuff like that. You can do it. I, I'm, I'm confident that you can. Yeah, I think I can too. Just, just got to keep on working. Really, I mean, it's easy to it's easy to have some success and then get lazy and fall off fast. So, as long as we avoid that, you, you definitely have the right mindset. I can see your dad's been, uh, you know, I, I but, but I want to say your dad's been a very positive influence in you because you, you seem to have the same determination that he has. You know what I mean? Yeah, and. On your comment earlier, I don't know if you'll be able to see my dad at LCRC. I, I'm not sure if he's coming or not. Uh, I hope he does. I don't think he is. It would be great to come pitch you. I, I think it's just me going. Oh, well, I'll get to meet I you. I know, I know. That's all right. All right. Uh, so will we see more uh, factory drivers coming out of uh, factory tracks, you think? Mm, I, I honestly... Doubt it because a lot of the factory tracks guys, and this is fine, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really seem like they want to do this for a living. They just want to do it and do as good as they can and just have a great time. But I don't, I don't think that they want the stress of having to perform and be at that top level, be the guy that everybody looks to. They're, they're just really in it to just, have a great, great time, do the best they can and take what they can get. But as far as a professional standpoint, I think, I don't, I don't know if they're up for that. I, I think they would rather just pursue different dreams. How's that affected you? How have you dealt with the pressure and the stress of doing this professionally? To be honest, when I step back and think about like, Oh, I, I better do good at this race, you know, associated is paying me to be there. I I don't want them to feel like they're wasting their money. If I do bad, like I can sit here and like psych myself out and with all those thoughts, but it seems like every time I get to the actual race and I'm actually racing, none of that ever crosses my mind. I'm just there trying to do the best I can. And if it doesn't work out, then we got next weekend, you know, you know what, man, I think that is absolutely the, you're too young to stress, number one. I get it. You want to do this as a living. It's 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 already there in your hands. You just got to mold it and make it to what you want it to be. And I think you have the right, like, I'm already impressed by just your mindset and, and whatnot. So you're going to do it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about a bad race day because there's many more to come. <clears throat> yeah. All right. As a young driver <laughs> in this industry, is there anything that you would like to see change in RC racing? Is there anything you think as a young racer you can communicate to us older racers what you want to see happen? Um, I know I want to see RC be more appealing and cool to younger racers. What would you like to see change? Okay, we're, we're being honest here. Mm-hmm. We might make people mad with this comment. That's fine. But... Honestly, the biggest thing that kind of annoyed me at these is mainly all the nitro races is it's kind of like 
everybody gets a trophy. You know what I mean? There's like 40 plus e truggy, 40 plus nitro buggy, 40 plus e buggy, sportsman, intermediate, sportsman this, intermediate that, e e truggy, e buggy. It there's like 30 classes. It's like you have 30 winners with with three cars. Like it's ridiculous in my opinion. You know, this should just be if. If you're not happy with not winning, then you need to just work harder and earn a win instead of sign up for something different, in my opinion. You know what, man? Um, I could totally agree with you on that. I mean, but the same could be said about 10 scale. There's a lot of different classes in, like, there's stock and, you know, yeah. or, or not, well, I think it's restock and mod and maybe a novice class in 10 scale. Uh, but it seems they have, like, different levels of stock class, too, and whatnot as well. So it's, it's not necessarily nitro, but you are right. There's a bunch of a bunch of them. What was that? I missed mm. that. I was marshaling. I was marshaling the forty plus e truggy main event, mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking, what is this? <laughs> like, 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 come on, are you serious? It's it's all about this, man. At the end of the day, e truggy's actually really growing pretty big um on the in the southeast pnb and all that they still keep it as one class but i noticed that joey split it up into sportsman and pro and all that stuff and if it grows i can see that's gonna be another i have nothing wrong with e-truggy growing but uh, it's just gonna add up make the day longer and and just uh but we're never gonna get away from this in the other countries they do but uh in america it's it's kind of hurt to stay unfortunately i think and it's okay it's just I wish we would figure out a way to use yeah. this. We can use these classes like sportsman intermediate to just try to get people to a better place in RC. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you've done sportsman, move up. Don't stay in open, move up, you know, or I don't know, man. It's yeah. Like there's, I don't think that there should be, there shouldn't be professional stock racers anymore. Like th that should not be a thing. Like if you're winning stock, then run mod. You know what I mean? you shouldn't be a paid guy to run stock all the time and promote the stock brands and, and win every single race. Like, again, we might be offending more people no, with that statement, but that's fine. sorry, sorry guys. It, should, it shouldn't be a thing out there. But uh, honestly, if I have like one, one huge like thing that makes me really question the, the racing system that we have, you could have a guy that has never raced an RC car in his life. He could go buy a ready-to-run two-wheel buggy, throw it on the track, and race at the Nationals with Dakota Fend, Ryan Mayfield, and be in their heat. That's like me taking my 250 to a pro supercross or motocross race and just lining up next to Eli Tomac because I feel like it. Yes. No, you should. There should be some sort of qualifying system for the nationals. You can't just have any random guy show up and just run two wheel mod, the most prestigious class, because he feels like it. You know what I mean? You know what, dude? I absolutely one hundred percent agree with you. Uh, that's where the federations need to raw needs to actually be a federation and come in and have regionals and stuff. But it, it is true, and I also feel that I've said this on the podcast. I'm going to say it again. We need a definitive line between a professional RC car driver, which would be you at this moment, and the amateurs, which would be the guys that aren't getting paid to do this. Because that's pretty much what, it, if you're getting paid to do this, you're getting paid to go to these races, then you are professional in my book. If you aren't getting paid to do this, you aren't. You may be on the cusp of getting there, but we need a definitive line and a pathway to becoming that pro. That's where I always like, I thought factory tracks was a great idea. So I get it, man. Yeah, like in motocross, at least they have they have amateur races and they have pro races. Pros race at the pro race, and amateurs race at the amateur race, and you never really see them combined unless people from the amateurs move up, get a factory ride, and turn pro. Then they race pro. You know what I mean? I agree. So it's not pros and joes on the track together. Ne you never see that. I agree, and I I think so. The, the issue is everybody can do RC. You don't, you know. Which is great, which is really good. Everybody can do it, but not everybody is at the same level, unfortunately. No matter how many sponsors you put on your shirts, how many sponsors you've got, 
You're still not a paid driver, and that's the difference, and you don't have the skills that they have. Not saying you can't have that, but if you're 31 years old and you're still trying, then it's probably too late. Uh, I think if you're 26 yeah. and you're still trying, it's a little too late. Um, I, I probably should have asked this, but uh, you, t- you talked about stock and mod. Did you find it a hard transition from stock racing mod? Is it that much of a hard transition to go to? Honestly, I don't really remember it a whole lot because it was so long ago. But I ran my last my last race run stock. I'm looking at the trophy to see the date of it was December fourth, two thousand fifteen. That was my last time running stock. Really? And yeah. So you really just it's not so much that the cars are so much different to drive. It's the change of mindset from the goal being to win to the goal being to improve. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of like, and that, that is honestly felt like the same transition from me racing 10 scale to nitro too. Like at the 10 scale races, the goal is to win. And the A scale races, the goal is obviously to win eventually, but right now it's just, Take what I can learn, learn as much as I can and make as much improvement as I can so I can eventually win. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, I think so that, that's kind of like the same. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the same transition from stock to mod for me. It, it feels similar, you know. Okay, awesome. I, but I another wonder thing, why people stay in stock. It must be the tinkering thing. That that's that's um, what I was just about to get at. It it's kind of sad for me, honestly, to see at all these big races. There's hardly even twenty entries in mod. There's like seventeen entries in modified two wheel buggy, and there's ninety in stock buggy. And the saddest part to me about that is like the top twenty stock drivers can race mod and, and not even be in the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you could take the top 20 stock guys and they could fit in in mod. I mean, I don't expect them to be winning, but they could at least make the main every now and again or become close to it, you know. I Personally, for me, I would rather make the A main in mod buggy and finish eighth than win stock buggy. Well, That's just me. I call it. I call mod stock and I call stock mod because that requires the most work and it just there's no incentive for people to move up because it's it's guys making money off motor sales and mod it's it's you know it's such a big money maker stock in America because it's not really big elsewhere in the world I like the fact that you can have stock I think it's a great class for the amateurs and that's what it should be treated I wish we had something like that in in, in nitro unfortunately we don't I like that factor of it, but I think the incentive, I mean, obviously if you're paying for your stuff, you can stay where you want to do, but I think the incentive should be eventually to go to mod. In fact, we had a big debate about this live a few weeks ago, a few months ago with my buddy from Florida and Wally and everybody. So I, I agree with you, man. Honestly, Drayton, I'm going to use my, my good pal Drayton here. He was a prime example that you don't need the top of the line, this, the everything titanium, lightweight, this, all that makes a car cost four times as much to be competitive in stock. Because have you ever looked at Drayton Staub's national title winning stock cars? No, but I think it's pretty stock. Disasters. But they're stock, right? They're they stock are cars. They're stock. They, they have like all the kit screws. I don't, I don't even think he ran a, a puck system. He's got his diff in crooked. He, he's got wires wrapped around his drivetrain and his four-wheel drive. And, and he, he beat everybody. He demolished those guys. He murdered them. Murdered them. And you got the other guys out there getting, like, fifth with a car that costs, like, four grand. And yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It, at the end of the day, it comes down to the driver. Drayton's got a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. So he was able to win anyway. All right. Well, here's the qu- okay. I'm going to save that for my next my next part of the segment. I I 100 agree with you, man. Um, it's good to hear this coming from a younger racer, as well. Uh, and 
not just an older racer that's saying, when I, when I raced stock, it was like this, you know. Um, we need it, but we need to make, we need to kind of incentivize people to get to mod, I would think. But people want those trophies, man. People want that A-man and that trophy. All right, dude. You know what? Um, we're, we're nearing the end of our podcast here, and I've, I've enjoyed our chat with us. It's been a little bit difficult because our audio isn't the greatest, but we made it work. Um, I have a... We have this uh, stop and go section that's brought to us by TNR Fuels. They are a sponsor of the uh, NNRC because here at the NNRC podcast, we're all about the glory, the glory that is nitro. And TNR Fuels is the hottest fuel in, on the nitro fuel. I'm sorry, it's the hottest nitro fuel on the market at the moment, owned and operated by Chris Nelson and his family, made by racers for racers. TNR Fuels is, fuels is currently available throughout the USA. For more information to support the company or purchase some fuel, visit www.tnrfuels.com or contact Chris Nelson directly at chris at tnrfuels.com. Find them on House of RC and Facebook and contact them. Thank you to TNR Fuels for bringing us the TNR Fuels Stop and Go segment with Aiden Horn. Aiden, so this part of the podcast, I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to answer them in as little, like one word or as little as possible. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So number one, I don't know how much you made at the exact RC race, but what did you spend your winnings on? I haven't spent it. Good man. Good man. Not even a treat. Like I saw you guys had a fancy dinner. Um... I did buy that dinner and I bought a new pair of shoes. That's it. How much can I ask how much did you get of that 10k? You didn't get 10k. No, I got 1750. Okay. You know what? Actually scratch that. I, I bought a fresh mountain bike. <laughs> what did you buy? I forgot about that. Uh a specialized epic comp 2016 World Cup edition. I saw a good deal for it online and I've been I've been getting in to the mountain biking recently, trying to avoid the dad bod. So. Yeah, you don't want to look like me. Um, <laughs> but it seems to be mountain biking and cycling is the natural RC progression and motocross. Okay, number two. Do you have any pre-race rituals? No. As long as I got my, uh, my lucky underwear. Lucky underwear? I hope you haven't had them for like 15 years. No, I, I get a new pair of, I only wear, I have a certain pair of underwear. I only wear them on main day at a big race. They never get worn other than that. And I, the pair gets replaced about every year. Well, what pair of, <laughs> well, what special pair of underwear is this? Or you're not letting their secrets out to people. Do you want to see them? Sure. Let's bring them up. Oh, you got them. You ain't got them on, are you? All right. No, I ain't got them on. I, I'm going to bring out the, the 2021 lucky underwear. Okay, this might might be how you win the nationals. As long as I got these boys on, <laughs> whenever it's main day. For those who ain't watching, they got checkered flags and blue. They look like riding pants. What type of uh, boxes are those? Um, they're Ethica compression shorts, mm -hmm. and they're the most comfortable underwear ever made in the history of underwear, and I will never wear anything else. Yo, that's a good plug. <laughs> now I'm going to go look them up and see if they have any big boy sizes. Uh, even though I like my... You got to get sponsored by Ethica on the show. I'm sponsored by Manscaped, and the, thus their, their actual boxes are really good, too. Um, really nice and comfortable. And you need to get into that Manscaping thing, man. The girls dig it, but then you got to get a girlfriend first. Or many see, girlfriends. See, I have I, I have the Manscaped package. I got the uh, the weed whacker, the lawnmower. It came with the shed. We got we got ball deodorant. I know oh, the whole nine. You we got the like, whole kit. Thank you for doing my ad read. They got a lawnmower four point I know this is TNR's thing, but I just came up. Um, check out the lawnmower four point It's wireless charging. Number three. What is your favorite food? <laughs> pizza okay i can't argue with you there number four what is your favorite sport or full scale full scale racing outside of rc you said motocross so who's your favorite ri rider 
Probably Adam Cincerillo. Really? He's yeah, he's good. He yeah, he's out. Well, he was out for most of the year. Uh, any hobbies yeah. besides RC? Mountain biking. Mountain biking, and I do ride my dirt bike with my brother and my dad when okay. I'm home. Uh, Not very often, though. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> any any other hobbies besides RC, like not mountain biking or, you know, something that you're into that may be a little bit weird, gaming, collecting action figures like me? I don't know. Um, I don't really do a whole lot with myself other than prep for the next time at the track, to be honest. But <laughs> I do have an Xbox I hop on every now and again with the boys. But other than that, not not into a whole bunch. What's no. your game you like the most? Uh, it's either Call of Duty or make fun of me here. I, I play Fortnite every now and again. But my son's hooked on Fortnite. Hooked on it. I'll play some Supercross games too. My son was pretty good at that too. What was that? My songs. My son is like addicted to Fortnite. And oh yeah, yeah, he was pretty good at Supercross too. He's a He's only eight. Okay. What song is on I'm your... I'm no good at any of the video games I play. You're an RC nerd, though. You're like a horse of blinders on right now. If it ain't RC, you ain't worried about it. That's the way to be some days, sometimes. What song... Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Number six. What song is first in your playlist right now? I don't know. I know I listen to a lot of Machine Gun Kelly. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Jackson Brunson were playing that that Tampa song that's, that's going around on TikTok in the pits at at uh, Silver State, getting hyped no, up on that. So. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go look for it. Man. Totally fine. All right, um, number seven. Nitro is the glory. That that shows to me that you're listening. <laughs> And number eight, what is something you want to do when you turn 21? I don't know if it has anything to do with turning 21, but I do want to go skydiving eventually. That's that's a bucket list. Okay. Sweet, sweet. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for participating in the TNR Fuels Stop and Go. And thank you, TNR Fuels, for sponsoring this part of the podcast. Aiden, that's going to bring our chat to an end. Um, thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to meeting you. You seem to be a breath of fresh air in the RC industry. One thing I'm going to tell you is, like, I got to find a nickname for you now because I'm giving everybody nicknames, and it's obligatory that you have to accept that nickname. I haven't figured out yours yet. Um, it might be like, Nobody's ever gave me a catchy one. I think we're going to just call you Aiden around the horn. Um, like... Like either from the sports center thing or from going actually around the the horn or what whatever I can't remember I don't know but that doesn't sound right we need to get your cool nickname and I I ask you to embrace that and I've and never gotten a catch you the one thing I would suggest to you as a is we need it is embrace it embrace like a character be if you if you if you're angry let it be ang- be angry don't say stuff that you know that'll get you in trouble but if someone pisses you off. Embrace it. Like, I, I think that we need more uh, more ambience, more, what's the word I'm looking for? I say it all the time. We need more flavor in RC. We need, it's so vanilla right now. Everybody's trying to be PC. I've enjoyed this chat with you. I was, I thought it was going to be very PC and it turned out not to be as PC as I thought. So keep that up. I like that. My, my best nickname that I've ever got is, uh, some people call me A1 Horn. They entered me into the, the computer as A1 Horn in, at my home track. I don't know if it's because the basketball thing or, or they think I'm saucy, but. <laughs> A1 Saucy. That, that's good. the only one that's came close no, to sticking. We, we got to find a battle one for you. We got to find a battle one for you. Uh, is there anybody you would like to thank? We do. Is there anybody you would like to thank or shout out your sponsors while we're here, please? Yeah, Team Associated, Reedy, Proline, Lunsford, RC1, Factory Tracks, uh, Makita, Kicker, Boom RC. I got some great companies behind me. I honestly wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I feel like I have a really solid program going. Obviously, my dad has done, he has sacrificed everything for me. You know, he, he's pretty much spent every dime he's ever made just to get me to the track. Even when I sucked, 
he would keep on swiping that credit card to get me to the next race and try to get me an opportunity. So I have, will forever have mad respect for that guy, no matter what happens. Um, Brent Telke, he sacrificed a lot for me too. He, he really has given me a great opportunity for this year and I'm, I'm really grateful for it. And, um, yeah, it's, he's like, he's like a, a second dad and he's not just a manager, you know? So I got some great people in my corner and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Sweet. Um, I also had two more questions I forgot to ask. Uh, one would be who's faster right now? You or dragon and number two, the TLR AE beef. Is it back? All right. All right. All right. So question number one, between me and Drayton, I think that Drayton has a, a touch more like raw speed, mm-hmm. like a bit more like, like hot lap, if you will. But I feel like I'm more reliable to put a, a run together and um, be overall like more consistent Is he from doing week the to week and race to race. I think so. Okay. I don't know though. Okay. I'll have to ask him. All right. And I've been trying and to get this. The TLR AEB. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I'd say it definitely exists. I'd say I'd say it exists for sure. Yes. Because I know that Spencer does not have a lot of friends that wear shirts lettered TLR. I know that for sure. I, okay, so let me entertain you a little bit. So if you watch A3 of Two Wheel Modified Buggy at the Exact RC Challenge, you can see Spencer gets into Cavalry, and then a lot of people are pissed off about it in the crowd. And then when Cav gets back up to Spencer, dude, the place was going crazy. They were all, take him out! Take him out! Hit him! Yeah! And then Cavalry passed him clean. Mm-hmm. He passed him clean. And so it was like... Kind of a letdown, but it really kind of like put the stamp on it for Cav. So there was there was some there was some heat for sure. But honestly, I think everybody on TLR gets along with me pretty well. I, I haven't had any issues with that team. They seem to get along well. And Thomas Tran is the TLR team manager. He's my pro line team manager mm-hmm. too. So we work together with in the prior category. So I can't. I don't really have room for beef in TLR. Me and Tom get along great. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Dakota get along good, but I think, I think, I don't know if it's so much a TLR AE rivalry as much as it is a Spencer Rivkin Dakota Fenn rivalry. And that is entertaining. I know, I'm not going to lie. Even though Spencer is my teammate and I'm the best, but it, it's entertaining. And you, we could definitely pour gas on that fire all day long. <laughs> I think we need it. Um, it makes RC exciting. I know TLR and AE had the biggest beef back in the day. I think it's coming back. We need it in RC. We need drivers to have beef with each other. We know they don't all like each other. I think it makes for ex- it makes our sport exciting. And I think, hey, man, you need to put your arms out too. When guys start coming, put those arms out and be like, hey, you ain't getting over me that fast. If, if that's the case, then I have, a, I have a story that you might like. When I was, when I was like first starting to become relevant in the 10 scale industry, um, I, I got one of my first like top five battles at a, at a 10 scale race was with Ryan Cavallari back in 2019. I believe it was a, a Tacoma. And he said after the race, cause he ended up beating me after the race, he goes, nice run, dude. And I was pretty mad about that because it's like, he <laughs> took me out and then told me good run after we finished. So for the rest of the year, I, I like took him out every chance I got. Like anytime I was even close to him, I I hacked him. I hacked him as hard as I could. We were in the worlds for the C, the four wheel drive C main worlds at Slovakia. Um, I probably ran into Ryan Cavallari eight eight or nine times, oh my like gosh. on purpose. <laughs> and I took him out at the Roar Nats a couple times, <laughs> just completely intentionally, and. <laughs> Because he took me out a couple times before right. that too, so I was like, I was like, I'm thinking getting pushed around by this guy, so I started hitting him like every chance I got. But 
nowadays, me and Ryan are actually on good terms. We get along well. We, we have a lot of re- mutual respect for each other at the races. So that hatchet is completely buried in behind us. But for a while there, it was it was ugly. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty bad. But sometimes you just got to put your foot down, I guess. And we, we were both pretty stubborn. But the, the hatchet is buried. We're, we're on good terms terms now we're, we're pro-line teammates and we, we get along well so Cavs, it was interesting for a while Cavs probably one of my favorite <laughs> I, I i think Cavs one of the best to ever touch a transmitter man um aiden thank you for your time it's been super entertaining man i can't wait to meet you next month good luck at your nitro race this weekend tell dragon i said what's up and man keep up the good work i think people are sleeping on you i think you have it and I'm excited to see what you do in your career. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Cool, man. Have a good one. Talk to you later. We are now at that point of the show where you should fasten those seatbelts and put your big boy pants on. Whoa. Things are about to get serious. It's time for the JQ Racing Rant. Well, guess what? We have another JQ Racing rant. That's two weeks in a row we had a rant. The only thing we're missing is Jeff. We've been asked to have Jeff come back on her. Uh, Jeff is kind of out of the RC scene right now. He's all about airport life and being the best ramp manager that he can be. I was talking to the other day. He says, yeah, he'll come back, but he kind of needs to get filled in with what's going on in RC. And um, yeah, I think Joseph actually misses him quite a lot. So Where does he maybe we'll... Now? Um, uh, Iowa, I think, or one of them countries in the Midwest. Um, nice. but he's, yeah, he's he's definitely into airport life right now and enjoying that. But we'll get him back on. Okay, Joseph. So we had um we had something happen. We had a an Ephra live this week, and I missed it because I was kind of busy. But I did rewatch it uh, yesterday or day before. He said you, I should watch it. And it was very interesting, very interesting. Um, some very good points in there. Also, I want to shout out and say congratulations to House of RC. And now them and Afro are collaborating, which is good. I know Connie was kind of working towards it, but... Only took a year, but it's good, finally. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm just going to... I think we can give ourselves a, a little small pat on the back here. I can't reach my back, so I'll pat myself on the shoulder. And you should do the same too, Joseph. I mean, you was adamant about that, and so was I, and they're doing it. So that's good. Good for Connie, good for uh, House of RC, good for Afra, all of that stuff. So that's, that's good to see. So I enjoyed this live this week, though. I did enjoy it. I, I got some positive vibes out of it. It was good to hear Nick. I, I like, he, he talks a lot of sense. And the other guy, Mike, what was his name? The F1 dude? Style. He talked a lot of sense too. And Matt. Javier was there but it, you know his focus not is not saying on, much yeah saying i mean audition. yeah he was i he like he didn't want to say anything wrong i could see that and it was his main focus was if and i think he's scared about the hill like we're gonna lose our tradition and our history and all that type of stuff um but some positive some positive comments some positive input uh from matt Nick and Mike, I believe his name was, and Javier as well. But uh, yeah, Joseph, you can lead off. You can. You had something you wanted to talk about on this. So, and we, I'm sure we're going to talk about more. But go ahead. You you take the well lead. first before we talk about qualifying races. Just I got the feeling that Matt was sort of pushing yes. the agenda a bit, like for yes. more change. And it was so weird because in the previous video, Javier actually said that Efra is not professional. Efra is. Uh, volunteers they mm-hmm. don't want money all that stuff right and then i i made that video criticizing that amongst other things and, and saying we criticized that, hey, it on the podcast you, by the way n- n- yeah name name an organization a non-profit organization with an agenda that doesn't want money they want to raise as much money as possible and then mm-hmm. take that money and put it towards whatever goal they have whatever mission they have that's where they put the money I agree. So, and I was just like, I couldn't understand why the attitude was, oh, we are not professional and we don't want money. What the hell is that? So then it was so interesting now to hear Matt actually twice bring up 
uh, Dorna, who is the company that runs the MotoGP. Mm -hmm. FIM is the federation of uh, right. motorcycle racing, right? Dorna is an outside company that runs MotoGP. It's a professional company working with the federation running the championship. Okay, so Matt had the question that, and maybe we can take some inspiration from Dorna mm -hmm. and uh, sort of modernize and professionalize how we run the events and stuff like this, right? And I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell? Like, in the last it video, they like were just against this, you know? And then Javier, <laughs> his typical politi politician answer, he says, like, yes, of course, we can take many ideas here and, like, basically didn't say anything. But still, it was, fun. it was funny. If Mar. <laughs> yeah. If Mar. It, was, it was funny that it's, like, basically the opposite of the previous uh, video. So maybe well, there's some progress happening behind it, the scenes. It, it sounds like they said everything we say, we've been saying for a few years now. To be honest, yeah, but um, that's a really good thing. I mean, I know if, that's the point. That is the point if it of takes this podcast. Three, three years to happen. As long as it happens, that's yes. good. Um, yeah, the 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 F one guy, Mike, twelve scale racer, Mark, he, Mark, Styles, Mark, sorry, it? Mark Style. Sorry, I don't know why I got his name. That was cool. He's actually like sitting on a on Botas's car, I believe. I think, and um, he's like, we gotta make it about the show. We got to make it about the show and, and Matt, we got to make it about the show and, and Nick, we got to make it about the show. And Javier yeah. is like, yeah, yes, if Mar, <laughs> no, yeah, you probably yeah. just say if Mar, you're just like, yeah. Um, yeah, but okay. So that gets me started. So I'm making it about the show. So there are a few different things to consider here. Uh, the main, the sort of interesting point of what they were talking about that let's make this about the show we need to make it more fun for spectators people watching and for the races themselves so let's have heads up qualifying racing let's have qualifying racing instead of mm -hmm. qualifying we have too much qualifying you go nick brought up the point that he works for rc racing tv not rc qualifying tv you know it's supposed to be racing and that if you go to a euros and you don't make the a main uh some 10 scale 10 scale electric euros for example or something you only get to race what 10 minutes the whole week mm -hmm. really everything else is just practice or qualifying you aren't racing the other cars so yes so this this is where we are at we practice and qualify too much we don't race enough uh so my first point is we need to make a distinction between club racing, local regional racing for fun, and then a big championship, like a European championship, for example, that could be the highlight of someone's year. They prepare, they spend money, they travel there, they are focused, they want to do as well as possible. And most people there don't really care that much about their result, they're there for fun. But still, that race, it's a European championship, so it means something. So th there's there's a difference, you know, between that and then a local club race. So also the approach and thinking about the format and thinking about what's most important here is a bit different. Like making it super fair and equal for everyone isn't as important at the club race as it is at the European Championship. You know, when you think about the format, like okay, if what if we just have races for qualifying instead of uh, everyone competing against the clock so the format can be a bit different in a club race or local race compared to a world championship or european championship that's one thing and then a second thing is that when when talking about it's about the show we need to uh, make this f look fun and exciting for people and uh, we need to make the sort of vi online video content and stuff something that people would like to watch. I think that it's important also to realize that every other sport in the world, they don't show you everything, okay? And also, they typically don't have so many participants. Mm -hmm. Our races have 150, 180 drivers, and they all need to get to practice and qualify and race and stuff. So you can't really make your focus like let's make this show something that everyone would like to watch uh, eight hours a day. 
no, that's not how it works. So even in um, motocross or supercross, you know, they have practice and qualifying that they don't even show. That's not the show that they show mm -hmm. to the public. It, super fans can see that now. Right. You know, streaming they pay services online and stuff. Or if you go to the event, you can go early and you can watch that. But mm -hmm. most of the people show up for the show, which is the main events, you know. So then they have, okay, we qualify in this race. But during the day, they've already qualified and dropped a whole bunch of people out so that they only have right, two right, races right. for qualifying. Because they can't you know? so, possibly film yeah, the whole so, thing. Yeah, so it's sort of one thing to remember is that the way we race and all this, if we want to make it about the show, we have to take this into account. So we don't want to show necessarily everything. We just sort of show the good stuff at the end. That that should be our show. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree. And Yeah. So then when we get to this whole qualifying uh there's too much qualifying. We should make qualifying races also. Uh, I think that if you talk to 10 different people, you will have 10 slightly different opinions. Mm -hmm. But in general, you could look at it like this. For people who get paid to race and who, who even if they aren't paid, take it seriously and want to do the best they can, Qualifying races is a bad idea because it makes it quite uh, unfair in a sense. What I mean by that is qualifying the position that you are in that race isn't everything that matters. So because we are so many people, you have to compare the times. So if you have two different uh, qualifying races, let's say you win one of them, if everyone in that other qualifying race were faster than you, you wouldn't mm -hmm. beat them. You would still be behind exactly. them. You know? So when comparing races, it gets difficult because if someone takes you out, you lose time. If you are battling someone, you lose time. Uh, if you get taken out at the start of the race, you're at the back of the pack. You have to battle through everyone. And even if you win that race, you don't really win because it doesn't mean anything, you know, the time means something. So if that race was a slow race and you win it, you won't be even happy because you look at the overall time. Where did you qualify, you know? So there are many different things that can go wrong in this kind of uh, system where you only have races instead of uh, everyone racing on their own, on, on time, on clock. So, uh, for example, just let's say you are a really fast driver, but you're in a slow race. Maybe you just pull away from everyone. You have a clean race. You have a very good time. Then you are in a race where you have many drivers of equal ability and there's sort of rough driving and you suffer because of that, you know, and these you, you can say like it's the same for everyone, blah, blah, mm -hmm. but it really isn't at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Luck starts to play a much larger role. Now, the only way we can really find out how this would work is if we did it for a few races and tried it and saw like, okay, well, you know what? With this system, uh, we tend to get the same qualifying results as we normally get. So who cares? You know, it's just, this is how it is. And it's more fun to watch. But even then there's one problem. And that is if you are in, let's say the fastest heat and you're in third place and fourth place comes up and is battling you, it may even be a smarter move to sort of let that guy go or not b fight back at least because you lose one position, right? But if you start battling and slowing down and suffering because of it, you may lose countless more because in the other heats, there are some fast guys who will go faster than you. Do you see what I mean? Yes, so yes. we could end up in this situation where that because the positions on track don't mean as much as potentially losing time and losing more positions, the racing isn't really even that good. Well, okay, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, are you finished? Sorry? No, sorry. I'll, I'll wait till well, you finish and then I'll... If you have about a question about this, you can ask, but no, I can finish sort of my Go ahead, finish. Thing. Go ahead, finish. Okay. 
So uh, because there are issues with this, quali like every race is a qualifier, that's one reason that we came up with the format that is used in RC2 at the RCGP series. And it's also now available in the live timing software and in Everlaps. Well, so why don't you explain is... how it works so people who, well, yeah, who are listening to this about can, to do. can understand. Yeah, how about you shut up and let me talk, like we just agreed. So um, it's available already. So this is a format that can be used at races. So to eliminate this problem of the unfairness of racing for qualifying and comparing times from races, Instead, what you do is you have practice as normal, you have seeding as normal, so you seed into a qualifying heat, and then you have if you, you have three rounds of qualifying, for example. You have two rounds of normal IFMAR style qualifying. And out of those two rounds, you take you drop one, for example, to make it even better and more fair. And you, you look at the points per round. Okay? And tiebreaker could be, for example, the best time. So then uh, after that, you are qualified and reseeded into qualifying races. So after those two rounds of my qualifying, the top 12, let's say it's heats of 12, the top 12 go into the fastest group. 13 to 24 go into the second fastest group and so on and so on. And then the last round of qualifying, you go, you start with the slowest group and they race. You end with the fastest group and they race. And this is a qualifying race where your position on track actually matters. So if you are in that fastest group and you win that race, you are TQ. If you break, you qualify 12th. So not the end of the world. You mm -hmm. didn't have a good mm -hmm. qualifying race but you had already pre-qualified into that group, so you are safe. You're in the semifinal. So you're, you're already Whatever. in the semifinal. Right, right, right. Yeah. Let's say 16 go to the semifinal. Okay, so then the second fastest group, if you win that, you are 13th. But that's actually an exciting race to watch also because not only for the win and it's racing and, well, yeah, I won the qualifying race, but remember, 16 go to the semifinal. So that means first place is 13th, second, 14th, uh, third, 15th, fourth place is the last guy to go to the semifinal. So that makes a race within that race, like, oh, you have to finish top four and you'll make the semifinal, you know? And that sort of same thing repeats throughout the qualifying races. So there's always, of course, the winner call won a qualifying race, but also there's some position which is like the last guy to make it into the higher bracket of finals. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to give more racing, uh, more heads up racing for the races and also make it more exciting for the people watching. The conclusion of qualifying uh, is exciting because you have to race for your final qualifying position. And then after that, you just have normal mains. And so yeah, so one last thing. When you do it this way also, it's, it feeds into the whole show aspect of it because then what you can do is the show is, the show of qualifying is that last round of qualifying. So it doesn't really matter all the things that have happened before. All, all the things, the only thing that you need to know is in this group, if you finish top four, you make the semifinal directly. That's a good thing because you don't have to bump for the quarters, whatever. In this group, if the, the guy that wins this group is overall top qualifier of the whole event, mm -hmm. you know, so then it's very simple to explain to people and it's, and it's not as long as an all day qualifying thing. You know, you can make a sh qualifying show about that round of qualifying and every race is a race to the finish line. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a couple of problems. One, most of these races in America, they don't do IFMAR style racing, so there's no semifinals. It's just an ABC. How is that a problem? Okay, I'm ABC, just saying. Let's say, let's say ABCD uh, top 12 go to the main, right? And uh, three bump. So it's 15 car hits. So in that 15 uh, 
the fastest 15 cars qualifying race, you have to finish top 12 to make the main directly. Right? Mm -hmm. It works exactly the same. So it's not an issue at all. Okay, so now, dude, what is that noise? It's just my microphone fucking uh, auto adjusting. So, okay, so you, you weren't qualifying for that, but what about for, how about the races like what RCGP had for the top 12 or 13 guys that were there? That was racing. You like that, right? What do you mean? Well, remember for the pro guys, for the arts or RCGP class of RCGP, it was all qualifying races. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, let's cover that. The thing about qualifying races is that it works when the, end, the field isn't so big. When you have less drivers overall, you can have qualifying mm -hmm. races. Like the Reedy race, every race is a main. People always bring that up. Well, that format doesn't work if there's more than about 30 drivers. Even I don't really, I'm not a super big fan of the Reedy race either. Because there you get points for where you finish. But sometimes you have a very easy race and sometimes you have a hard race, you know. So it's not, that's not a fair way to do it either, really. That's a race to see that who is, who is really fast and consistent and good at racing. Okay, that's fine. But that's not a good system to qualify for a world championship or European championship, in my opinion. Qualifying is supposed to be like, who's the fastest guy? You know, in, that's what I think it should be. So it's just not a good way to do it. So when you have, so a you don't want the field, you don't want the all you don't want the heads up qualifying race in then, like what we had at for RCGP all, for all rounds. No, because it defeats right. the purpose of qualifying. Right, I agree with you on that point. I agree with you on yeah, that. Point. So if you have less drivers, like in the RCGP class, there's just one heat of drivers, then it makes sense because your position and your time, it's one and one, you know, it, you aren't comparing different races and their times. If you finish sixth in the race, you qualified sixth in that round. It's simple. So you might as well race each other to make it exciting and finish sixth instead of everyone driving around on the same track with their own clock. And, you know, do you see what I mean? Like when you only have one heat or two heats or three heats, like a small amount of heats, you Club can racing. do it. Club yeah. racing is perfect. Yes. So for smaller races, like club races, regional races, where you have only a couple of heats or something, sure, do heads up racing as qualifying. But I would do it in, in a format that also has already been done and is actually the RCGP format if there was more than one heat which is you see it into, into the qualifying group and then you race. So that fastest group, the winner is TQ of that round. Let's say there's 12 guys there. The second group, the winner of that uh, heat is 13th in the round. And between rounds, you shuffle some drivers. So the four last drivers in the faster group drop down, four fastest guys in the lower group bump up. You know, this way of doing it, you can you can get it done and every race is important, but it gets complicated, you know. If you have 18 heats and you're shuffling drivers this way and that way, it's too complicated. That's the problem. It, this needs to be easy, simple, straightforward. So uh, I think that the best solution is to have... In club racing, if it's two rounds of qualifying and a main normally, just have one round of qualifying. But instead of counting the whole race, so you eliminate someone that has a bad crash or breaks late in the mm -hmm. race or something, just make it like the best three laps in five Can minutes we... or best five laps in five minutes. Any five laps, you just add the best ones together, <clears throat> average it out. That's the qualifying time. You know, some a system like this, you one round is enough really like after that have qualifying races where everyone races heads up fastest group you win that you tq you know slowest group you last you last overall and then have the mains after that yeah i i, I kind of definitely feel that's for club racing i think the all races every 
for every you know for every class it's just not feasible it wouldn't be every class in in europe it would be just like for everybody would be not would not be feasible why can't we do like fast laps like like f1 or motocross qualifying why is that not feasible i don't know i i think it is but uh, i think our our lap times are so short also that mm. Many times they are so short that it's almost better if you have like two, three, four, mm-hmm. five, you know, something no, like that. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm one of them guys that actually find qualifying very exciting, you know, so. Yeah, I even, okay, so let's say not heads up racing, but uh, qualifying sort of on your own clock. It's actually more exciting if you take, for example, a five minute run and it's your best three laps. Or something mm-hmm. like that. Your average. Yeah, but because it, then, it, even th- then, it's more exciting because there's more sort of change. Like, okay, so Tebow is on top right now, and I beg to differ. Mayfield Mayfield needs a fast lap, you know, and he only mm-hmm. has a few laps to do it. So there's you always know like who is TQ right now, right? Uh, when it's three lap- uh, when it's the five minute time, the whole time it's not as exciting to watch because you don't really know what's going on. I see now. I like seeding, but I just think like like th- that three lap stuff is just hard to follow for me. Um, I think the five minutes is easier to follow, and I think just one hot lap is because everybody talks about hot lap anyway. You know what I mean? I got hot lap in that lap in that race. I, like people take more pride in getting hot lap than they do in actually TQing sometimes. I think, or they take some solace in that. Why not make it qualifying to some sort to make things exciting? One lap you can follow. You know what I mean? In one lap, with a one lap race, you can have multiple TQs in a, in one heat. You know what I mean? Um, but maybe that won't work because it's you know kind of different. And those qualifying circumstances, F1 and, and motocross, the the drivers are still on a clock per se, and they go up when they, they go out when they want and all that stuff. So that um, if RC still has to be scheduled, <clears throat> uh. I would, I think for series races like RCGP uh, and where they have an actual pro class like they did, I enjoy the heads up racing. I enjoy the inverted fields. Mind you, everybody knew they were going to make the main, so it didn't make a difference anyway. You know what I mean? It just was making things exciting. So it's it's quite a conundrum, man. I mean, it's it's not feasible to do the entire race like that because you say it, it becomes unfair. I think it's a perfect place for club for, for club racing to do it. And we don't have the, and in these races, we don't have a level, like a line between pro and Joe. So, you know, you can have a different quad, you know, it's, it's. Yeah. I think it, let's say the Euros or the Worlds and every qualifier was a race. I think it could, and yeah, every qualifier is a race, but your position in the race doesn't really determine where you qualify. They compare mm-hmm. the times, right? It could work. I am just very skeptical about it because the races i have been at which have used that everyone complains and Mm -hmm. it's not as much fun because that feeling of this is not fair is very strong you know and when you when you first quote and the whole problem is that there are so many participants that's what make that's what makes it not fair you know if it's just two heats it's not that big of a deal when it's 18 heats, it starts becoming a problem, you know? And it's not just that the top guys are complaining. It's someone who normally finishes, like, let's say that they know that at the Euros, they are about 30th to 50th or something. And that's kind of where they want to be. And they quali- they are in qualifying and they have trouble getting taken out or starting last or this or that. And they have a terrible time and they're like 100 and. 20th or something you know there's a lot of those people too and they won't be happy because Mm -hmm. they they feel like it was out of their hands but when they now go out there and drive around to the best of their ability and they qualify 40th or whatever they'll be happy with that or satisfied do you see what i mean like Mm -hmm. people want to feel that they are in control of their destiny and when you have uh races for qualifying and then comparing the times from the races it doesn't feel like that so I don't I know, think, man. I don't think it would work for everybody. Not I don't for, think it would. Not for big yeah. races like that. Um, 
it, it worked for RC, but well, I didn't. Uh, the RC two didn't. They hadn't had one qualifying race, so yeah, that's yeah, my I, point. For I know, best, I don't know. It's the a, best way to do it is to have the seeding, have some qualifying, either full time or five best laps or whatever, one or two rounds of that, and then after that, have a qualifying race. Then everyone gets that excitement of racing, and they are racing for their final qualifying position. That's the best speaking with a lot of drivers and uh, getting their opinions and developing this concept. That's the best that we came up with. And no one that I know of has complained about that format. They have liked the fact that they qualify first and they have that sense of accomplishment. <laughs> they complain about getting I, too much runtime. <laughs> yeah, I, this is where I qualified. This is my position. I qualified 12th or whatever, so I'm in that fastest group now i'm racing for my final position in qualifying mm -hmm. i want to qualify top five and they race for that position you know so that's just for big races like this with a lot of entries that's the best way in my opinion you know what i have to say to all of that what's that if mar federations um what do you guys think uh should heads up racing just be for club racing is heads up racing too much for these big events like i couldn't imagine uh p and b 800 and something like all those people and doing heads up racing oh my gosh it would take forever um sh should should we have a line where the pros do we know this where the pros only do it i don't know to make things exciting because that's what the upper echelon uh and whatnot so yeah so i don't know it's a it's an odd decision odd decision i think definitely we have too much practice uh it's unnecessary because at the races now if we had a third of the practice we have now the qualifying results would still be the same it's this thing like initially if you have no practice it would affect things in a big way if you have one round of practice, it still it's not enough. It affects things in a big way. Then after a certain point, the amount of practice you add doesn't matter. It doesn't change things anymore. <clears throat> and we are far, far away from that point. We have way too much practice at these races. Except for, let's say, DNC and these big races where if you race one class, you get two practice rounds. You know, that's not a lot. <laughs> That's like the minimum, really. I'm talking about like worlds and euros where you have multiple days of just mm -hmm. practicing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's too much. I don't know. I don't know. I think that I think that what they do, people want to race more. Um, but at the end of the day, it also it's still going to still come down to time. Even at like you said, at heads up racing is going to come down to time anyway. So yeah, I you think know. I think the best way forward would be that all the big races would adopt this system that the last round of qualifying is a race. Maybe. Maybe okay. they can And then after that, there's the mains. Because that way, everyone gets to race one more time. Mm -hmm. So if you're, mm -hmm. if you're in a shitty six-minute bump-up main at some oversaturated race with too many entries where they don't give you runtime, you at least got that qualifying race, and that was fun. And then the next day in the morning, you had your bump-up race. So it increases the enjoyment of all, and also people would probably watch that last round of qualifying because it's exciting. So I think all the races should adopt that. And then for some races, like smaller races, regional club racing, whatever, maybe they're experiment with different ideas. Okay, what if we do this style of qualifying, that style of qualifying? Mm -hmm. Five laps full time. I actually happen racing, to enjoy you know, the really like race, that. by the way. So I, I yeah, happen to enjoy the really race is a whole different thing. Yes, I know. It I know. doesn't work for what we are talking about. Oh, I know, yeah, I know, because they really don't have qualifying races. You pick out of a hat or something, right? No, it's three heats, and every race you get points for your position. Right, I know, but you your starting yeah. position to determine. And every how. race is sort of random, so you race each other and stuff. You know, start different places. It, it's a whole different thing. It has. I nothing agree. To do I with know. Qualifying. I know there is no yeah, qualifying. It's at like the I like strawberry ice cream. That's how stupid your comment just was. Just you know, a stupid stay issue. Stay on topic. Put your phone down and focus. 
you have nerve to talk, Mister. I don't pay attention to anything while yeah. I'm talking. When yeah, you start when rambling on about, at least I don't start talking then and giving my opinion on some random. I'm giving you my opinion. Completely. I irrelevant. like the read erase format. Yeah. So what? That's not what we're talking about now. I don't know. It's we are ahead. we are coming up with the solution to Efra's uh, video question of of qualifying races, and then three years from now they will come up with this. Whatever we, our conclusion here is, three years from now they'll get that conclusion. Okay, so let's do this properly. <laughs> so the big races we already con confirmed. Last round of qualifying is a qualifying race. Done. That's what should happen. It all already is possible in the software. Smaller races, experiment. Five laps, f best uh, average of five laps, then qualifying race, then main, for example. OCRC, they have uh, the typical club racing format or JBRL or all these races, right? Two qualifiers and a main. That's what they do. You still with me? Put your phone down. Two qualifiers you know, and a main. Now you see how it feels. You see how it feels now when I have to do that to you. Two qualifiers in the main. Two qualifiers in the main. That's standard. Standard issue mm -hmm. club race. First qualifier, best three laps, or best five laps average. Boom. Qualify into a bracket race. That's your qualifying race. You're in the fastest group. Boom. If you win that race, you're TQ. If you break in that race, you're, if it's 10 drivers in that hit, you qualify 10th, whatever. Then go into your mains. You know, that should be like a standard qualifying uh, or standard racing format right. for a sm small race also. And it could be but done at those small experiment. races. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people will enjoy it because they get to race each time to get well, yeah, not the first it, one. It's more focus on racing, but it's still you. You are still in control. You have mm -hmm. the qualifier first to seed you into a qualifying race. That's up to you. You go out there, you do your best laps. If you have a bad crash, it doesn't matter. If you get taken out, it doesn't matter. You have five minutes to do five fast laps. So you qualify to the best of your ability. And then you are in your race, qualifying race, and you're racing other cars for position for your final qualifying position. And then you the go tracks, into the main event. What if the track only is a five lap track? And there's no like such track. Red one's close. No. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, then you do best two laps or three laps, whatever. I still like the first. F you, I still you like always hot adjust. Laps. I still like hot. Laps. Could be hot lap too. Why not do that? For hot lap, uh, one thing that's really good for the show is the whole uh, super pole kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So where some I don't know positions. What is it normally like positions four to eight or two to six or whatever they do? I don't know what they're doing on road. Like after qualifying some certain positions have a what did i say it was called i just super said pole? the name of it super, super pole, pole yeah super pole where right. each guy goes out one yeah, by one getting the best lap and mm -hmm. then the winner of that makes the main directly or yeah whatever right so that's uh that's a really good thing for the show because you you're watching one car mm -hmm. trying to do a best lap that's something well, cool. I think, I think even RCGP should have something like that. Yeah, I think so. Just I think Onward just has less competitors that are able to do that more time. Um, no, it doesn't have like anything it. to do with that. But anywho. There's always a break between qualifying and main, so mm -hmm. it's time to do it. I don't know. I think uh, what does the listener, what do the listeners feel? Should we go, like, I understand your point, Joseph. We can have heads up racing. Should we go to hot laps? Should we go to the best three laps? Should we go to the RC2 style? Of qualifying where you do get a qualifying race should the pros all do qualifying races i don't know i feel they should personally yeah, um, well, you know what uh it could even be a how mixture about, how Let's about say this? the euros this, it, oh. Go I, i'm gonna use rcgp for an example say mm -hmm. we do say we do a qualifying race where your hot lap seed you and then you can do three qualifying so it's not races. a qualifying race it's yes qualifying well it's, it's a yeah, qualifying heat. Sorry, you do your hot lap. You have one hot lap heat that seeds see you for the following uh, qualifying races. Yeah, and what's that then? What's the qualifying race? How well, it would have been just like what RCGP did. Then people would have complained because they would have started oh, you, from the back. 
What do you mean? Like RC2? You have a mixture. You have a, you have a qualif- No, in RCG, you have a RCGP. You have a qualifying heat of fast laps, right? Or Super Bowl. Or leave mm-hmm. that for the last one. Actually, that could be the last one. I don't know how they'll work it out because Super Bowl is usually last. I'm just thinking, oh, well, I, don't, I doubt this will work. And then have three qualifying races after that. Or three qualifying races and then a qualifying heat for hot laps. We already have that. We have seeding. Which is the no, best but lap I want the, laps no, not seeding. I would rather then. That's why no, we do the three qualifying races, then do the soup like Super Bowl at the end, which will be fastest lap. Yeah, okay, like five so minutes like, ago, we already said that. that they no, would no, be no, good no, no, no. But like that's that. the mixture. I was thinking. I was. I, then I. Well, I was thinking. Left, you like, lost. So you're, no, you're no, no, no. What you're trying no. to say is what I was going to say just now. No, 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 no. I want to. I was yeah, thinking listen. that maybe. No, listen seriously. I was thinking that we could use just like a qualifying heat with one lap, one lap, hot lap, and that determines your starting position for the qualifying races. But it also, or it just, or no, that don't make sense, does it? Or it could be just at the beginning and it's just part of the qualifying, you know what I mean? Maybe you do one race with hot laps. Maybe you do a one race with a uh, five minute IFMAR style qualifying on the clock. Yeah, and like then two starting races. starting position for the qualifying race is a super pole in a way. Everyone goes out and does a fast lap, something. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say is at some race like the Euros or World's big race, some, some many qualifying rounds, an idea could be that every qualifier isn't the same also. So let's say you run twice a day or three times a day. Maybe the first one is normal, if my style. Maybe the second one is five laps or something like that, you know. And then maybe the third one again is if my style. Like you can also mix it up, you know. So it's not always just the same thing. Like this one, you have to go for the best lap, you know, because you just, you need to do three li- really fast laps. You know, mm-hmm. that's going to be a bit different than running a five minute consistent time. You know, so there's o- options to do stuff like that also. Yeah, maybe we need a mix. One, a little bit of four qualifiers, one of or three. You could just do three, one hot lap, one regular and one race, two. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What do the listeners think? What do you guys think? Um, I, I have to, I, I know everybody just said, like you said, when everybody just says do qualifying races, it's not as easy as you think, but there are definitely no, formats. No, not with so many drivers. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it sort of puts the show before the racing at that point. Like it makes a bit of a mockery of the racing itself, you know, because. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, how many, it, how many people are there on a Saturday at a, at a supercross race? Like how many riders normally? Like that don't make it. That, well, I don't know. It, it depends. But they take. Is there like a hundred riders 40? there? I think they take forty for the night show, like twenty and twenty, or forty-four, twenty-two, twenty-two, something like that. Is it like a hundred riders there in qualifying, or, or what? I mean, maybe it could be if it if it's a good turnout. So we're still talking about a high entry race, kind of you know, hundred entries, maybe. Well, yeah, but no one sees them, do they? They go they out do. for qualifying which is like post your best laps and then the 40 best laps make the night show and that's it no, I'm, but I'm we can't asking, do that like we works. can't have someone we can't have a system where we get rid of the slow guys no of course not <laughs> you know so it's no, different because they want to be the have a yeah different they're important way of too. racing i don't know we'll find out let the uh let the viewers let us know what they're doing and i and i'm gonna like I was impressed with with Matt and Mark and Nick and this Afro Live. I'm I have hope now. I have hope. Now we need to fix Roar and get fix Ifmar. And then we'll be all right. And get all the old guard out of Ephra and Roar and Ifmar and we'll be all right. Yeah. So good stuff. Let us know what you guys think about the qualifying races. What would you like? Super Bowl, hot laps, three laps, old school in Ifmar style qualifying, qualifying races. Or a mixture of all. Let us know how you guys qualify at your track, at your club. Maybe you do things a little bit differently as well. It'd be interesting to see how different races and different tracks do this. Joseph, do you have anything to add before we close up this week's podcast? No. Okay. Well, guys, that brings us uh, to the end of this week's podcast. I'd like to shout out and say thank you to Aiden Horn for coming on. And talking with us, it was a breath of fresh air. Thank you to my buddy Kevin LaChapelle for coming on, or RC Kevin as he's known. Uh, we're gonna, he's gonna be part of the rotating co-host that we have here. 
thank you jq for your time i appreciate it um <clears throat> it's good to have you back on i really enjoyed our podcast last week just you and i talking uh i'll be hopefully you'll be available while i'm in the nationals at the nationals so you could come on as a virtual commentator as well and we break down do our race craps race craps race caps in the morning and yeah thank you to all the nnrc squad around the world we guys greatly appreciate your support we can't do it without you thank you to everybody that shares this podcast downloads it and listens it listens to it please share it we need you to share that and um get it get it going again uh please go to youtube hit that sub button hit that like button uh or dislike button leave us a comment and hit that notification bell do the same for joseph uh he hasn't put out a video in a while how's your video when's your next video joseph I don't know. I'm busy. <laughs> okay. Oh, see, <laughs> I don't know. I'm busy. Didn't even last a year. Um, <laughs> he's summer times back. Summer times back, and he's hitting the track. Uh, yeah. So we look forward to that. But go over. He's got some good information over there. So go over there. Give him a like, sub, and hit that notification button. Shout out to all the patrons of the NNRC. We greatly appreciate it. You guys keep these bills paid. If you guys wish to become a patron, you can. The link is in the written description. Every little bit helps. I'm getting excited for my national trip, Joseph. Really getting excited. Can't wait to go there and meet up with a whole bunch of people. Um, and thank you to our sponsors, which are Mayako, TNR Fuels, High Tech, Techno RC, Beach RC, Sun City RC Raceway, Manscaped.com, Lugs RC, JQ Racing, Papa Willis Traction Tonic, Racecraft USA, rcgp wally builds house of rc and ah i think that's it jq threads i said jq threads already thank you guys remember showing our sponsors some love shows the podcast some love if you're interested in sponsoring the podcast hit me up we're always looking for some sponsors uh please guys show them some love we have affiliate links we have promo codes all that stuff that will be in the written description of this podcast i think that's it nitro is the glory E-Buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Lefty and JQ. Nothing to say, JQ. Nothing to say. Nothing smart to say. I watch Efrat live in three years. They'll come up with qualifying races as the last round of qualifying. That's it. E Make the show. Yeah, there we go. And e Truggy will have a Worlds. Lefty and JQ. Up. Thank you for listening to the No Name RC Podcast. We greatly appreciate all the support and love from you, the listeners. Without all of you, none of this is possible. Special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. If you wish to support the podcast further, you can at patreon.com forward slash NNRC Podcast. As a patron, you will receive early releases, special content, and patron only giveaways also please follow us on facebook instagram and our website www.nnrcpodcast.com remember nitro is the glory but e-buggy pays the bills if you aren't having fun it doesn't make sense and if you ain't grinding you're sliding lefty out Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory.
so bad. <laughs>